Hotty ho, you handsome hunk. Grab a snack and gain some chunk. If your day is great or really sunk, we hope to help you shake the funk. So if you're good to hear some junk, buckle up, it's the Junk Monk Podcast. Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Junk Monk Podcast. I'm your host, Candace Sloan, you know from Instagram at Hardens and Hard Hats. And I'm Noah, your co host, you know from right now. If this is your first time listening, let us fill you in. We are completely finished watching and reviewing every episode of the USA hit TV show Monk right here each week. And we have been doing so while eating a little bit of junk. So, I have my final junk food here. Everyone's favorite American pastime. (laughs) Microwave popcorn. It's burnt. (laughs) It's so burnt. I don't know how I did it that The smoke alarm started going off and I was like, is that your popcorn? It wasn't. It was actually Toby burning my... Junk food, I guess, for later. I do have something right now, though. What is it? Um, it is grain-free cookies. Siete brand. They do, like, all these grain-free stuff. And these are some new Mexican shortbread. I saw these at Central Market. Made with almond flour and coconut sugar. So, I've never tried these. I'm excited about them. I need to try those. Those look good. Also, you must know, I have seen every episode of Monk. I'm a huge fan. Started watching in 2007 and for the most part watched it as it aired. I have also seen every episode of Monk. I finished every season and every episode, which we are going to discuss right now. So, if you're ready to start the show, one last time, Toby, take it away. Here's what happened. Guys, I am so excited. We've been prepping for months for this. We're discussing all the things, like, you should literally see my notes. For the whole series, this, how many inches would you say tall this is, Noah? I would say, like, two. Two? It's, like, two inches tall of Of just... paper. Of, like, handwritten notes. Some of them are typed. Most of them are handwritten. I'm pretty impressed. It's very (laughs) monkish, I would say. (laughs) But anyway, this episode is obviously, it's not going to be episode-based like we usually do, but it's going to be about all the best parts of the series, we got summations, guest stars, crazy moments, plot holes. It's kind of like a giant bonus episode. And of course, it's our farewell episode. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited because basically what we're going to be doing is all the segments you know and love, but like with a twist. Yeah. So each segment is going to have two categories just so you guys like kind of have a feel of how the show is going to be formatted. For example, here's what happened is going to be the first one and that's going to have best summations which are the actual here's what happened and then the best clues on the show. So those are the two categories that we have in here's what happened. I won't spoil the rest, but again, that's just how it's going to be formatted. Yeah. And it's going to be awesome because we actually asked you guys to help us find the best parts of Monk. Yeah. We scoured the internet, Facebook, Instagram for your answers. So thank you in advance for all of your answers. Cause I definitely can't say like everyone's name. Like they said yeah. this, they said that I just have giant, giant lists I've compiled of all your guys' answers. So thank you for answering all the polls that we've been having you do for like a month now. But we're also going to, at the end of each segment, tell you our favorite parts. Because, you know, we're the ones with the microphone. Yeah, one last time. <laughs> we've got the mics, people. Listen up. Okay, so let's get started with Here's What Happened. I'm so excited. Okay, what we're going to do first is talk about what are your favorite summations. So we're just going to go back and forth and read your guys' answers. So... Visits a farm. That's the one with Randy, where Mm -hmm. Randy gets to tell a summation, right? It's a good one. That is good. Um, Favorite show, which is the one where it's all 70s themed and everyone has an afro. Yes. Oh, oh, it's so good. (laughs) Monk has an afro and he's, it's very nostalgic. (laughs) It's so funny. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Um, We have Manhattan. What's the Manhattan summation? Um, oh, 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 that's the urinator one <laughs> where he wants to, like, he, he sees the guy on the subway and he's like, urinator, urinator. And Sharona's like, Monk, do you think we should arrest the murderer or the guy who peed in the subway? And he's like, the murderer. <laughs> that is a good one. Um, the circus. Oh, that's the one with the circus clown. Or he's interrupting, yeah. Yeah, he's, like, mimicking behind him, like, Uh this big shoe and stuff. And it, like, Stoudemire pulls up his pants and he does the same thing. Oh, my gosh, it's so funny. Have Mexico. That's the one where he's thirsty. They had no Sierra Springs, so he hasn't drank in, like, a few days. So he tells the entire summation just completely parched. And, like, it is pretty funny. That's a pretty good one. I like that one, too. Um, Sharona, which is where it's entirely sped up. 
oh, yeah, they're trapped in the closet. Mm-hmm. That's true. And they're like, whoa, 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 slow down. <laughs> they even, like, speed up the feed that you're watching. And it's, like, the guy, like, hits the guy's head on the <laughs> Like, really like, fast. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, and goes to Vegas. That's the one where Monk, he's trying to win back Randy's money. Because Randy has a gambling problem, I guess. <laughs> so he's, like, trying to win back his money. And he's, like... While he's telling the summation, he's like, hit me, hit me, deal, no, stay, fold, like, what? And he's like, saying, it's so good. Here's what happened. Blah, blah, blah. Hit me. Yep. Give him to me. Split him. And it's, <laughs> it's real. That one's really suspenseful. Next is Dale the Whale, which is the one where Randy wears his fat suit, which is hilarious. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And they like make him stand on the chair and everything. He, like, and he waddles and he like can't get off the chair and mm-hmm. he like falls down. That is, that's a good one too. Um, hypnotized. That is... Oh, that's the like fake summation where he's wrong and he's like, I know what happened. And he's like, she saw his hiney and he died of embarrassment. And oh my gosh, that one's so cringy. That's funny. That's so cringe. I love that. You always say it's cringy, but it's it's pretty funny. (laughs) Okay, next is the miracle, which is the one where they're singing, right? Yeah, when they're dressed as monks. And oh my god, that is so funny. (laughs) They're like humming it because monks like. Here's what happened. And then Nana's just like, It was all a ruse from the beginning. <laughs> it's so terrible. It's so bad. It That's is. cringy. It's so it's it's really bad. Okay, and then the next few, so if you can tell Noah, I denoted the ones that people voted for the most. Okay. So we had three votes for Mr. Muck and the Kid, which is the one where he's telling Tommy the storybook. And it's like illustrated and, you know, he has Tommy in his lap and he's telling him, you know, here's what happened. The young prince was being taken oh, yeah. cared for by the evil lady and her husband and they chop his pinky off. I was like, well, it's kind of graphic, but <laughs> <laughs> he's telling this invasion to Tommy. It's really sweet. So I could see how people like that one. That one's, that one's a pretty that good one. That one is pretty good. And then there's the rapper, which is the one where they wrap it and they're like, that's what a surprise is. What does he say? No, no, no. You're mixing it up. That's when Randy raps to Snoop Dogg That's... about his own song. Then what's the, the one? No, no, no. Uh, the, the summation is <clears throat> Monk goes and he's like, word, word, everybody word. And he tries to get him to be quiet. <laughs> word, and then word. Snoop Dogg is like, yeah, well, murderous. He's like, I got this. And then he's like, have you ever been accused? Man, you got set up and you said it wasn't you. Man, you got set okay. up. Okay. Yeah. And so then he raps like. Oh, he yeah. raps. The limo came by and picked him up and boom, went extra large. And he tells the whole summation. So that's, that's a good sick. one, guys. I had three votes for that one. That's good. That is awesome. Um, <laughs> The next one is gets drunk. That This one had oh, five. Hilarious. This one had five votes. You know, Randy's like. Captain, you got to get in there. Monk's doing a summation drunk. And he's like, Cappy, 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 Cappy. <laughs> that summation is so long and it's so funny. And he's like, they're, he's like, they're all murderers. They all did it. And he like picks up a lamp and like shakes it at him. <laughs> Just look at him. Okay. They don't look that bad, but they did it. <laughs> and then he like falls asleep. <laughs> like, Monk. Monk. And he's like, okay, everybody go home. And then he like wakes up and he's like, wait. <laughs> it's so good. That one is really funny. <laughs> so five votes for that one. And then five votes for Cabin Fever, which is the one where they're side by side summations. And it's basically summarizing two different crimes. It is so cool. I love that one. Yep. Randy and Monk at the same time. And then they're like, here's what happened. It was a setup from the whole time. She killed her husband in the bathtub, blah, 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 blah. And then who is the, the, the agent Combs, I guess. He looks at Stottlemyre and he's like, who are you listening to? And he's like, neither of them. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it during a shootout? Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's I don't crazy. think it's Agent Combs because he's the one that's outside that kills them. It's the, I guess the sheriff who was investigating the wife who killed her husband in the tub. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So yeah, it was during a shootout. So yeah, it made it even more suspenseful and like crazy and sped up. That's a really good yeah. one, guys. I like that one. And then your guys' favorite summation of all was the garbage strike. Ten votes for the garbage strike. Oh, wow. Which is, well, we know Monk gives the wrong summation first, which isn't that interesting. He just kind of accuses the mayor when it's not the mayor. But the Alice Cooper summation is what everybody oh, loves. Oh, my God. He's the like, Alice I solved the case. I figured it out. He's like, 
Well, I, does he say it was Alice Cooper? He does, right? Yeah. Yeah, because he's in the summation. Yeah, he's like, Alice Cooper, everybody knows rock stars love antique chairs. <laughs> it was the antique wingback Cusack chair. And yeah, and then he's like... <laughs> and, and, it, and it's also funny, too, because Alice Cooper is there... Like in the summation, they like got guest him star. to actually do that. Yeah, and then he like shoots him, and he's like, and then he realized like what? A, oh my god, it's really funny. It's, I love that. He's like, what did he say? Because he's like, he shoots him for his chair, and they're like, then why didn't he take the chair? And he's like, because there was a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's so stupid. Oh my gosh, I can see why you guys like that one. That one is really good. Okay, so. Now, we're going to tell you guys our favorite summations. On my personal list, I put ones that I was kind of surprised that other people didn't say. Oh. Or like ones that I liked. Um, not necessarily my favorite. I'll, sh- I'll share my favorite, but a few ones that were like kind of my honorable mentions would be Billionaire Mugger. There's This is the one where Sharona solved the case and so she... Wants to, like, assist in the telling of it. And so she's like, yeah, and you thought you could get away with it. And Monk's like, did, did you want to tell? And she's like, no, 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 go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yes. And he's like, anyway, so blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah. And that's when blah, blah, blah. And he's like, seriously, you can do it. And she's like, no, 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 you're doing great. Go ahead. <laughs> Keep going. He's like, you can do it. Yeah, I can do it next time or something. It's, <laughs> it's really cute. That one's a really good one. Mexico, you guys did say. The parched one is really funny. I love the guy the hotel guy, he's trying to check Monk out of his room while Monk is accusing Dr. Madero. And so he's like, it was a setup from the beginning. And the guy's like, uh, sir, do you, uh, do you like to check out? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's like, which room was it? And he's like, the one with the bomb behind the painting. And he's like, oh yes, room 204. (laughs) (laughs) And this guy just keeps interrupting and he's like, yeah, yeah, just forget it. Whatever. It doesn't matter. (laughs) It's so funny. Of course, the rapper, um, Get Strunk is, is a classic. Uh, Obviously. But my favorite one has to be favorite show. What? Yeah. I, this is, this is the thing is that. I want to say when me and Denise did the summation episode, if you guys haven't listened to it, it's really good. Um, We go into all the summations like at length. And I don't think, I think I chose the rapper as my favorite one, but I hadn't seen favorite show like since then. Like, cause you know, we just recently did that one. I, this summation is like really long. It's like seven minutes or 12 minutes. It's extremely long. And so it's like this whole, this whole dream is the summation and I love how the clapping, like the clapping is like 30 seconds of it. And it's just like Adrian's oh, yeah. like wish fulfillment of like, everyone's like cheering for him and love he catches him. the football and he's like, oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, stop it. And then ever he's like, he gives his dad a hug Aww. and he's like, oh, everyone's like, oh, and then he stops hugging and then he hugs him on the other side and was like, oh, <laughs> and then all the little kids are so funny. How do I even know that kid is mine? Like, I haven't seen a dime from you. How do I know it's mine? And he's like. This, ha- this whole family is wacko. You're on a stripper pole in Florida and you are cracked out. Like, oh my gosh, it's so funny. Oh my. It's, I love it. And and also the clothes make it. Oh, like, it's just hilarious. Yeah, to see Monk with the, with the fro, with the tight bell-bottom pants. It's just great. It, I, I think, I mean, that's my favorite. I, that's my favorite one. It makes me laugh and smile and it has Monk. Whereas the rapper doesn't have Monk in it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, whatever, you know. It's a great one, but I'm going with favorite show, guys. Wow. Okay. Um, I guess I'll say I'm my top three, which um, number three, I would say, is Gets Drunk. Okay. He's drunk the entire time. It's hilarious. It's a classic. Yeah. Number two, I would say Mr. Monk and the Miracle. They're, okay. Where they're humming the entire time. Yeah. Here's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. It's good. It's good. And then I would say for my number one, I would say rapper. Really? I love the rapper. Okay. I'm okay with that. I know it's a great one. I'm just trying to justify like why I changed my answer from like a year ago. (laughs) 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 It is. No, it's a good one. I would. It's not like bad lyrics or anything. And it's like, because you're like, what a dance. It's so fun. I love it. And I like Monk is like dancing to it in the (laughs) background. It's really good. I love it. Yeah. That's a great one. Okay, guys. So that's our first thing. Favorite summations. Next. I'm so excited to talk about this one. Most memorable clues. Mm. 
Okay, I Toby. Dry. Toby coming in strong. He just delivered me some hot wings. Delicious they, looking wings. My my mouth is puckering. They look hot. I'm gonna try them. Are oh. they hot? What flavor? Mm-hmm. They're red hot. I think they're called red Franks. hot. Franks. Yeah, Franks. I think yeah. You smell no, them. Smells good. Mm-hmm. Burns my nose hairs. <laughs> As you guys know, Monk is foremost a mystery. So I love the clues. I'm so excited to talk about this one. Let's start off with glasses. The glasses in Back to School. This is where Derek Philby kills his girlfriend, puts her in the clock tower, and Monk, they Monk found the glasses. Mm-hmm. And he says, he like basically tells him, you know, where were Beth Landau's glasses? We know she wore glasses. Where were they? So he basically sets him up to go up there to look for the glasses. And then he plants them there in a different spot. And so that's how Monk catches him because he knew to go up there. And he's like, oh, I was just uh, looking around for... And he's like, you are you have the glasses in your hand. I'm not stupid. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So good, good clue. The glasses and back to school. And Mr. Monk and the dog where, you know, Shelby gives birth to these little tailless cute puppies they're australian what are they called australian shepherds i think some, they're like australian, australian shep- greyhounds or, or some, sh- sheepdog or shepherd or i think it's like sheepdog or something mm-hmm. and it's such a great clue because she mated yeah <laughs> this is hard to explain she <laughs> mated with this other dog like one night i guess i don't know they had a fun night <laughs> um and nice stroll in the park it was the murderer's dogs. Yeah, because Shelby wasn't tailless. Shelby was not tailless. His she made it with the murderer's dog. The tailless the dog. The rare tailless dog. Exactly. No, that was good. Also, don't be a hero in the billionaire mugger. That was when Sharona sees like the same phrase, don't be a hero, as the mugger had said like a few, you know, a few days ago. And this mm-hmm. book was 15 years old. And she's like, don't be a hero. It's the same. But I don't know what that means. And she's like, I know, I know it was interesting, but I don't know why. And Monk's like, I solved the case. And she's like, I knew it was a good clue. And that, that's a good uh, one, guys. That's a good one. That is. Disher mint gum and gets hypnotized. The, the disher mint gum that he spit out at the crime scene was on her shoe. Mm-hmm. Very. That's a really good one because they're always, they talk about disher mint gum like five times in that episode. Mm-hmm. I love that. And then and Mr. Monk takes a vacation is the, of course, the silent summation, which... Nobody said in the summations. Nobody said the silent one. That's interesting. But hmm. he shows the photo of the suitcase. He like, he counts before when I got here, there was one, two, three. And then look, now there's one, two, three, four suitcases. And so that's the, the photo of the trunks. That's the clue that Monk uses to solve the case. That's a good one. So in Mr. Monk and the Secret Santa, there is... An oversized envelope and a way undersized envelope. Because she switches the letters in them. And so the big one is with the little one and the little one's with the big one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have the poison pawn and the genius. Where it's basically like the chess move where he knows he knows that his wife will drink it. Like that's her poison pawn. So she drinks it. It's like when in chess when you stick your pawn out and you expect them to grab it. He put the alcohol in there expecting her to grab it. And then and she drank it. it. Yeah. That's genius. Yeah. <laughs> genius. <laughs> in Mr. Monk and the Sidekick, there is this pebble from the that is stuck in the tire from the house that the murderer was in. Yeah, I think it's the Sidekick's house. It's the Sidekick's house that there's a pebble from the from her driveway. Mm-hmm. And it's in this guy's truck and in the tire. And they get it tested and they're like, oh, we've only sold this to like 10 people. Mm-hmm. So boom. Mm-hmm. So the Japanese doll and the astronaut is when the astronaut mails a Japanese doll to the girl's house when he's in outer space. So he mails it on that exact day that he's gone so that whenever the package gets there, the garage door will open and it will hang her. So he has an alibi when he's in outer space, basically. And Mr. Monk fight City Hall. The city council woman who gets murdered hires this woman, this woman and Monk doesn't know why. And she's an idiot and he doesn't know why anyone would hire this lady. But she's pregnant and he realizes that she needed the fake pregnant urine to convince her boyfriend that she was pregnant so her boyfriend wouldn't kill her. But he did anyways. Wait. 
No, no, not so he wouldn't. So he would stay. So he would stay with her, but he killed her instead. What a psychopath! Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that is so. Remember, because we went on that rant about don't lie about being pregnant. <laughs> that's, that's dumb. Don't do that. Just a reminder, guys. Don't lie about don't being lie. pregnant. There's a whole One Tree Hill episode about that. <laughs> yes. It doesn't end well. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so next is Happy Birthday, Mr. Monk, the Who Turned Out the Lights clue. This is when the guy gets stuck in the shredder and they're like, Monk, you know, they go in there to investigate and Monk is like, so are you sure that the lights were turned off when you came in here? And he's like, yeah, it was pitch black. I couldn't see. And he's like, well, who turned off the lights? He wasn't working in the dark. <laughs> he wasn't working in the dark. So that's a good one. Who turned off the lights? That's actually pretty genius. Yeah. Um, the heavy, the really heavy book on the shelf in Mr. Monk Gets Married. And it turns out that the pages are filled with gold. So that's why it's so heavy. Yep, exactly. The old man's walker in Very Old Man, when Monk figures out that the, uh, when he puts it together that the old man, like, left his walker across the room, he wouldn't have done that because he needed it to walk. <laughs> Like, mm-hmm. what a stupid killer. Why would you yeah. leave the guy's walker away from him? He can't reach it. Dumb. Um, the weird, not very useful superpower in class reunion, where a monk can read what someone writes on his back. Yeah. <laughs> of course, Trudy's gift. That's an easy one. And Mr. Monk goes to the bank. When they put together that, like, all the people, like, were involved, he figures out, like, who moved the plant, like... Only, like, this person could have moved the plant because it was super heavy. Only this person could have reached behind there because they're tall. So that he puts all the clues together, like, because it doesn't match any one person. Oh. It matches all the people. Uh, she's now gone meatless in Manhattan. She's now gone meatless. We, I say that so much, it's not even funny. <laughs> she's now gone, she's now gone meatless means this is not my coat. Anytime anyone says anything about, like, being vegan or vegetarian, <laughs> yeah. it's just like, she's not gone meatless. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Um, in Mr. Monk and the Ball Game, uh, girls can't eat fifteen pizzas, which, if you don't know what that is, I mean, <laughs> G come on. stands for girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Um, there's no tire tracks in Mr. Monk stuck in traffic, right? Because he drops the Volkswagen out of the back, but there's no like tire tracks of the guy trying to like slow down, slamming on his brakes or anything, because he just dropped it out of the back. So Monk is like, where's the tire tracks? So, And Mr. Monk gets drunk. Natalie realizes the smell of aqua velva. Yes. Oh, the taste. The taste. The taste of the smell. Like she, cause she drinks it. And she's like, what is that? And she's like, it smells like aqua velva. And she's like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> That's disgusting. And Mr. Monk in the panic room, when Darwin is afraid of the bald man, Mm-hmm. And so Monk puts together like, oh, the security guy was bald. He's bald. Also, rest in peace to Willie Garzin. He died this past week. He's the guy that played Monk's landlord in that episode. episode. Yeah. He also played, um, I know him best from White Collar. He play. I mean, he's on every episode, I think, of White Collar. Um, he's no Caffrey's friend. And then he was also on some episodes of Boy Meets World. He's done so much. I mean, I think he's on Friends. I mean, he's on tons of stuff, so... Rest in peace to Willie Garzin. He seems like a very nice guy. He he died of cancer, I believe. Aww. So, um, in Mister Monk and the Bad Girlfriend, the pen in Linda Fusco's like RV camper trailer thing rolls because she's parked on a hill. And if she wasn't parked on a hill, everything would have gone fine and smooth and dandy, but it didn't. She parked on a hill. Wow. She parked on a hill. That one had two votes. This next one also had two votes. Which is the Jack Russell Terrier in Mr. Monk is on air. He figures out that Jiggle Me Timbers, Jiggle which is also a good timbers. clue, I think. Jiggle Me Timbers is a good clue. But he figures out that the Jack Russell stole one of Max Hudson's shoes out of his house. Whenever he goes to like kill his wife and turn on the, he does this little trick. He steals one of his shoes. And so he's chewing on it and his owner's like, oh, I'm sorry, is this your shoe? And he's like, it's Max Hudson's shoe. So that's Dang. a good one too. In the sleeping suspect, in the sleeping suspect's house, they go inside of his room and there's ketchup bottles on the ceiling. And looks like, what the heck? But it's because he's trying to test out the glue to see if it'll stay and if the envelopes and whatever will stay on the ceiling. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that was Lindsay's favorite clue. Ketchup bottles. That had two votes. Mm Mm-hmm. Now for the biggest clue, 
y'all's most favorite clue that y'all loved. With five votes, Julie's card that she gives Mr. Monk when he's sick and Mr. Monk stays in bed. So how it's a clue is whenever they go to the... Um, remember, it's this is the guy with the pizza box. He delivers the pizza. He finishes the guy's route that he murdered. And so he delivers the pizza box to Natalie. And, well, it's actually to Monk's house. So Monk organizes all his trash in a particular way. And so he's like, yeah, go. you should go to the dump and we'll be able to find the box. So then the guy kidnaps Natalie, takes her to the trash thing. And they're like going to look for the pizza box so that they can he can get rid of the evidence. They're able to find it after like the cops show up. They're able to find it because... Some of the trash is playing Polly Wally Doodle and it directs them to it. And then at the end, <laughs> she, they give Monk the card back. That's funny. The card is, and now he has the card again. But yeah, so that's the number one clue that you guys thought. Thought that wow. was cool. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so some of my favorite clues that people did not say is, so my favorite stuff, guys, is the guilty knowledge clues. So in Mr. Monk and the Earthquake, the guy says, who's the widow? And Monk is like, how did he know that that lady was a widow? It was his lover. And so he just says, how, who's the widow? And it's like, that's total guilty knowledge. You didn't know she was a widow. And takes a stand. You have the chain snatching thug. And you're like, how did you know she? he was a chain snatching thug? How did yeah. you know it was chain snatching, right? Um, and Mr. Monk and the kid, when she's like, what's the big deal? The kid found a pinky. Like, yeah, the pinky. We didn't say it was a pinky. We said it was a finger. Exactly. Why? And then you have the ones with multiple clues. Like in the airplane, when the lady is like, height changes. She all of a sudden can't speak French. She's all of a sudden, she's not a vegetarian anymore. Um, you have like in the bank, like I said, where they all are joined as a team. Uh, one of my favorites is in the bully whenever she says aunt and aunt. Oh, yeah. That's a good That's one. That's a really good That's one. That's a really good one. In Mr. Monk and the Red-Headed Stranger, when the blind lady shakes the wrong hand. Oh, yeah. That's a good one, too. That is a really good one. Julie shirt in Mr. Monk and the Birds of the Bees. That's one of the best clues ever. It's all about Julie. And Tim. Okay. And then um, the plastic <laughs> yeah. juice rim on Mr. Monk is on the run where he can tell Sheriff Rollins like drink four ounces, but he also has the lid that he took off and then left it, which was a really stupid part on Sheriff Rollins part. Okay. This is going to be, this is my second favorite clue. Okay. This is definitively my second favorite clue, which is all the clues in the class reunion. You have Gertrude, right? Cause remember this is the guy who is trying to recreate his girlfriend's or his wife's suicide note. So he invites someone named Gertrude and then tries to call her Trudy. And she's like, my name's Gertrude. And he's like, but people call you Trudy, right? And she's like, I, my aunt does. And he's like, yeah, it's Trudy. So he like tries to like do that. He it's buys weird. her a dog named Tangerine and the dog is black. It's like, why would, and, she, and she's like, the pound said that his name was Tangerine. Isn't that crazy? And Monk's like, that is crazy because he's black <laughs> like, it's crazy and they go to Rocco's they're playing in the quad and they break the glass like those are my oh my gosh that one's so good that's my honorable mention but my favorite one which you guys mentioned is the pin in the rolling van from Linda Fusco when she says she part I parked on a hill her life crushed before her eyes and that was just that the was most just amazing acting that's the too. most clever clue because Monk saw her because your pin can roll in your room. Like, it could tilt. The problem is, is that it doesn't roll sometimes and not other times. I know. Something was Ooh. tilted. And so he figured out that it was tilted. That's crazy. Crazy, right? That's my that's my favorite clue is the pin. It's got to be the pin. Oh, yeah. That's Tangerine's a- good, though, too. <laughs> Tangerine is good. What? When Natalie names, like, something snowball, is it a cat? Mm. Yeah, that's not a clue, but. I know, but, like, mm-hmm. what is that? It it's, in my head. it's a Mr. Monk stays in bed because she's going around asking. She realizes the guy has a bruise on his thumb. So he's the killer. She gets scared and she's like, oh, nothing. I'm, I'm just looking for my cat. And she's like, snowflake. And he's like, oh, I actually found a cat. It's in my basement. Do you want to come check it out? And she's like, oh, no, it's probably not him. What color is he? And she's like, he's white. And she's like, oh, no, snowflake is black. And she's like, <laughs> snowflake is black. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Well, I guess I'll do my top three now. I guess number three would be in Mr. Monk and... What is it? Mr. Monk and Sharona. Where Sharona's uncle... It's not even, like, that helpful to the case. But they realize that mm. Sharona's uncle was a con man because in his room is the cushions... And they're all set up. That was very neat. I love that one. That's a great one, Noah. Thank That's you. That's so good. I love the Thank cushions. You. And then in... Like, who's pra- who practices falling? Yeah. There's something. Mm-hmm. And then in Mr. Monk... In Mr. Monk's 100th case, the... Whenever Monk is, you know, watching back the In Focus uh, show, you can see him like, oh, can you turn off the lights or whatever? What do you say? Turn on the lights? Turn off mm-hmm. the lights? He needed a light, yeah. He needed a light, and so he's like, can you turn on the lights? And he knows exactly which one to flip, because he's been there before. That is yep. awesome. Yep. That is so cool to me. And there's like a thousand light switches in this house. Nobody knows what any of them go to. Exactly. And the fact that James Novak knew which one to turn on the lamp that was closest to Monk, that's guilty knowledge. That's guilty what I'm saying. Knowledge. That's guilty knowledge. And then, I guess number one. Obviously has to be Trudy's gift in the oh, finale. Oh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't like that clever. It was l- literally just a videotape being like, yeah, he did it. But, I mean, No, still, but though. the clever part is they introduced it in season four. Yeah. And then brought it back in the finale. That's the clever part. And it obviously has to do with Trudy, but that's the amazing part. It's just the ultimate clue, really. It's the ultimate clue. That was there for... The whole time she was dead. <laughs> That's crazy. It is wild. Okay, guys. So that was Here's What Happened. So now we're going to move on to likes and dislikes. I put gifts because I like when you said gifts and curses. <laughs> and I hate that we didn't use it the whole time. So we're going on to gifts. What are the gifts in this season? Uh, in the season. In this series. And so how we're going to do this because... You would think that we would say like, oh, well, these are going to be our favorite episodes because this is what we liked. No, guys. You're going to have to wait for that good stuff. Okay. Oh, yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the best of the gang. So we're going to talk about uh, the gang all together. You know, Randy, the captain, Sharona, Natalie. We're going to talk about all of them. So let's get to it, guys. So these are all of your answers per usual. Uh, let's start with the gang moments where all the gang is together. Go ahead, Noah. Take it away. Um, when everyone is trying to get Monk out of the cult because they're all supportive of Monk. So great. Uh, whenever they defend Monk against Hal, like they know, they're like, you know, he doesn't have any money, right? When everyone tries to help Randy stop gambling. Oh yeah. That's That's very cute. Yep. Oh, you have a book. So now you can't lose. (laughs) That's, that's Natalie Sass. Um, when Trudy is alive in Mr. Monk and Mrs. Monk. And, Mm -hmm. like, Dr. Kroger comes over to help and the gang is all there just to, like, support him. Like, because obviously it's, like, super traumatizing. And Mr. Monk takes Manhattan when they all go as a team. No man left behind. Yeah, and Monk flies on a plane? Question mark? (laughs) Um, And Mr. Monk and the TV star, when they're all starstruck, like, Sharona's starstruck, they're all starstruck, they get their, like, own parts on the show and, like, she gets to hang out with Brad Terry and all of that. So, definitely that one. In the Secret Santa Christmas party in Mr. Monk and the Secret Santa, there's the Christmas party where everyone's singing songs and dancing and Natalie and Randy are flirting about sweaters. <laughs> yep, that one's a good one. Uh, in the Mr. Monk and the Big Game, when they go, when the captain and Randy go watch Monk and Natalie's basketball game. That's so sweet. And then they're like, which one's your kid? And he's like, oh, the big one with the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Mr. Monk Gets Dirty Duty. No ID. No, no idea? idea? No ID. No idea? <laughs> no I D. No, no idea. idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Oh my gosh, that's so good. <laughs> um, just in general, the evolution of, you know, the captain and Randy coming around to like being from an enemy to an ally. That's I mean, that's a great just overall gang oh, moment yeah. um and mr monk bumps his head everyone is so 
set on finding Monk, and everyone misses him, and everyone wants to make sure he's okay. That's just so cute. Yeah, and then Natalie's like, is it my fault? And <laughs> Dottomar, like, doesn't say anything. She's like, you're supposed to say it's not my fault. And he's like, what? You want me to lie? <laughs> so, something like that. Um, and Mr. Monk's 100th case, the fact that they're all together, and they're all celebrating Monk and his 100th case and his In Focus special, that's cool. And Mr. Monk goes to the bank when they're all literally dying together in the yeah. vault they're running out of air yep and they're all alone just the four of them yep yep very sweet and mr monk is on the run part two whenever they're grieving well natalie and randy are grieving because they don't know and the captain does know and natalie is furious at him mm. and i mean yeah she's furious at him and like he loved you and he trusted you and he's like i don't think you should rent out the legion hall and all this stuff and she gets mad um, that's an interesting one, guys. That's an interesting pick. Mm -hmm. But it, it was really good acting for sure on Natalie's part. I'll say oh, yeah. that. Um, in Mr. Monk and the Miracle, when they're all set on getting Stadi out of the monastery. Like, you have a life. Yes. Oh, that is a good one. Yeah. Um, Shelby having puppies. Aww. They're all I love that too. That's a good one. It's like, they didn't all have to be there, but they were. Which I, oh, I guess he's like exhibit A and exhibit B or whatever. Yeah. And so then he calls them there. But it's still nice. Because, like, uh, that's when Sotomayor's, like, drinking the scotch on the couch and Natalie's sitting by him and Randy's helping deliver the puppies. So, yeah, that's a good one. Obviously. Captain Sotomayor's wedding. Yep. Definitely big. Yep. To TK. Love it. Mr. Monk's 50th birthday party. Natalie throws it, which is amazing. And then, of course, Randy's there, even though he wants to leave, you know. <laughs> He's like, nope, not leaving. And, you know, the whole gang is there. That's amazing, too. And finally, everyone's there. For Monk's, like, reinstatement. Yes. Oh, gosh. Monk's that's a good badge. One. Just amazing. For he's sure. like, is this real? And they're like, don't, he's like, don't mess with me. And they're all happy for him. And even, like, the people who were in the, the station, they're all looking through the window. That's a great one, too, guys. Amazing. Good job. Okay, so my personal favorite, some of my favorites are, okay, this is in Mr. Monk is on air. He has little Willie as his, like, assistant. Okay. And they're trying to see if little Willie can fit through the window of the basement. And yeah. so he's like, let's measure it. And so Stottlemyre like goes over there and distracts him while Randy like cups around his head. <laughs> and then they like walk back and he like shakes his hand like without moving his hand or whatever. <laughs> and then they all walk back and Natalie, well, they're like, okay, how many inches? And Natalie like measures it out with the measuring thing. <laughs> and they're like, no, it's too big. And Natalie's like, okay, well, we're all going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> that one is really good. That, that one's so good. Mr. Monk and the paper boy, whenever Sharona, this is a Sharona episode, they're all sitting around at Monk's table and they're all reading the paper together and trying to look for the clues and stuff. I love that moment. Like they're all reading and then... Uh, Sharona finds the personal ad about her. It's like, it's Randy's personal ad. Yeah. He's like, looking for no nonsense blonde kids okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, she's like, this is you. And she's like, and then reads it. And he's like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. Oh my gosh, that's so <laughs> cute. That's so cute. Um, and then when Sharona comes back, they're all fighting in the station. Like all of them. Mm -hmm. it, like, when do we see all of them together? Like, as yeah. a gang of what? What is that? Six? Five? No. Five. Like, they're never all together. And then my last one um, is, I think this is my favorite, guys. I think it is. It's Mr. Monk bumps his head whenever they find him. And he, like, sees them and his memory is coming back. And he's like, I worked with you. I work with all of you. Aww. And he's looking at them. And then they're, like, all have tears in their eyes. And then... Natalie, like, hugs Monk. That's a... I love that one. Mm. I, I cried, so. That pulls on my heartstrings there, so. That's my favorite gang moment there. That's a good one. That really is a good one. Um, My favorite gang moments are definitely the out-of-element ones. They're not at work. They're not, you know, in the police station, mm. at a crime scene. Definitely, number three, Shelby having puppies. Mm -hmm. They're all there. None of them have to be there. It's all after hours, and they're just hanging out, delivering babies. Obviously, Stottlemyre's wedding, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course, of course. In The Secret Santa, the Christmas party is so cute. Everyone is bonding, which that one is in 
the police station, but it's just it's after hours. It's out of element. It's after hours. Mm-hmm. No one cares. They're just friends. They're just bonding. They're not coworkers. They're a family, and I love it. I just love it. I love the gang. And even so, that's your favorite one. Yeah, the e- Secret Santa one. Even when they're dying in the vault, that is just mm-hmm. that is a really amazing. good one too. That's a really powerful one. They're all bonding because that's when they. They figure out that Trudy's bracelet made of diamonds is the only thing that'll cut the lock. So he sacrifices the oh. bracelet. I'm like, come on, Monk, we have to do it. And they're all really sad for him, but they do what they have to do. Yep. Great moments, guys. Best of the gang. Love it, love it, love it. All right, let's keep it moving. And let's talk about Randy and the captain moments. These are going to be good. Okay, so... Um, Okay, so these first two are both from Ghost to a Wedding, actually. Uh, Whenever they're riding... Well, well, Randy got run over. So first, Stottlemyre is showing concern for Randy after he gets hit by the car. And he's, like, taking care of him in his hotel room, which is really sweet. But then you guys really liked the luggage cart where he pushes Randy on the luggage cart all the way. (laughs) And then he's, like, confronts... What's her name? Um... Teresa or whatever and he's like oh Teresa or I as I know you Darlene and he's like oh and because like Stottlemyre's been knocking him around the whole time so that's a good one it is so this is the next one is when Randy is telling Stottlemyre what to type into the computer and he's like okay T as in tsunami and Stottlemyre's (laughs) like really as in tsunami he's like yeah I get to choose (laughs) I'm the one saying it. I get to choose. <laughs> like, that's how we do it. <laughs> it's like, that's how who does it? Society. <laughs> we as a people, okay? All that's so wrong. That is not true. <laughs> <laughs> there are certain letters. T as in dog. That's so funny. Um, the next one is in the class reunion. Whenever they're trying to figure out, like, a suspect and... Randy walks up to the captain. He's like, okay, so this guy, he's like, number one, something, something, something. And number two, he's dead. And Stottlemyre's like, you know, most people would have started with that one. Like, because the guy is dead. Why would you tell me the first fact that's completely irrelevant? And then he's like, most people would have started with that one. And Randy's like, who? He's like, only me and every other person on the face of the planet. (laughs) That was a good one. And Mr. Monk and the actor... They're, uh, of course, they're making a movie about Monk and the gang. And Randy is being played by a girl. And, and Stottlemyre and Randy are in love. And, and so they have a scene where they kiss. And, and Stottlemyre and Randy are like, that never happened. Not even once. It never happened. God, that one is so bad. <laughs> that one is so bad. They have to clarify. <laughs> and Mr. Monk in the fashion show. This one's a real simple, easy one. Randy's trying to act all suave. It was an Italian suit. And he's smoking a cigarette. And Stottlemyre's like, boing! <laughs> looks it out of his mouth. That's so funny. I laugh every time I see it on the credits. Mm-hmm. Um, the stash swap in the miracle when Stottlemyre is gone. And so Randy grows a mustache. Because Stottlemyre shaves his. He loses his mustache. (laughs) And so Randy grows one. Like, shave it. (laughs) He gives him, obviously, a razor-shaped present. (laughs) The little fact, it's funny. That's good. Um, This one was really popular, guys. This was the, you're the man, that he tells... He's telling this to Monk. Stottlemyre is, but Randy swoops in and takes, like, Monk's moment. And... And so then he figures out, like, because Randy keeps doing stuff that's, like, overly, like, oh, I thought you would want me to call that in because, you know, I'm the man. (laughs) Stottlemyre's like, okay, Randy, I have to tell you the truth. I was talking about Monk, and you kind of stepped in, and he's like, really? And then so he, Randy starts throwing out these, like, what-if scenarios, and he's like, what if Monk and I were both drowning? Who would you save? And he's like, well, Monk can't swim, so I'd save Monk. And he's like, well, what if I was holding an anchor? And he's like... Well, why don't you let go of the anchor? <laughs> He's like, it's a family heirloom. <laughs> oh my god, it's so stupid. <laughs> that one's really good. That one's really good. 
In Mr. Monk and the Rock concert, Randy calls in sick at the Rock concert <laughs> with the music playing. And then he's like, no, I promise I'm, I'm sick. And then Sotomayor walks up behind Randy. <laughs> yep. And the next one is Darda Rings, which is in Happy Birthday, Mr. Monk. And he's like telling them I, this idea about Darda Rings. Like you throw it and it's attached to a string and then you pull it back, like inject people with poison. <laughs> um, but the part was when he's like, Monk is like, okay, Randy, you be you. Stottlemyre, you can be Meckler. And Randy's like, wait, I want to be Meckler. Like, he did more. <laughs> He's like, and then Stottlemyre's like, Randy, you're you. Yeah, and then his theory is so nonsensical. Stottlemyre tells TK, like, just nod your head and say maybe. <laughs> and <he's> like, maybe. <laughs> just nod your head and say And Mr. Wicked the Naked Man, the Magnapod, which is basically like an iPod, that Randy has is he's always asking for like people to fix it for him, and uh, Slaughtermire is like, "Oh, it's broken. Let me take a look at it." And he takes it on the floor and smashes it. And he's like, "Oh, you're right. It's broken." Yep. He's so annoying about it. It, it is a piece of crap, but he's so annoying about that. Of course, we have the reverse liposuction theory, and Mr. Monk meets Dale the Whale. Randy says, "What about reverse liposuction?" He lipoed himself down to like. 400 pounds and Leland's like well how did he gain all the weight back and Randy's like reverse liposuction and like and Leland's like oh my god <laughs> and Randy's like should I call the doctor no let's just keep our reverse liposuction theory to ourselves <laughs> um the escape pod and the astronaut it's like this globe let's say it represents the earth <laughs> and then and Randy's like it's just a theory, okay? And he's like, yeah, Sotomayor's like, I don't think so. I've heard theories before, and they do not sound like that. <laughs> yeah, well, the globe one, he's like, let's say this represents the Earth, and Sotomayor's like, it's a globe. It does represent the Earth. <laughs> I can't with that one. That was so funny. That's so good. Oh, my gosh. Like, the escape pod thing is just stupid, but it does represent the Earth. It's so good. Of course, just like when Randy quits and the captain wants him to come back, like is really sweet. He's like, oh, you know, yeah. you're a good cop. You know, I sh- sorry I said that and all that. This is Mr. Monkey Group Therapy. And Randy thinks that the killer is the opposite killer and just kills people based <laughs> off of what the opposite <laughs> of what their biggest fear is <laughs> instead of their biggest fear. So <laughs> the opposite of a spider is a tall building, of course. If there was such a thing as an opposite killer, you would have been killed by a rocket scientist years ago. Yep. Whenever, um, in Secret Santa, when they're singing, Oh, night, dear. I can never remember that. Oh, night. What? But, oh, both of them. Yeah, yeah. Si- yeah he's like, because he starts singing. Yeah, Stottlemyre's like, only the one that lights on your morning <laughs> it is a night of our dear Savior's birth. And he's like, oh, night diva. Yeah. Um, of course, finally, Randy's goodbye. Stottlemyre tells Randy that he'll be great at his new job. And when he moves to Sharona, everything's going to be fine. And yep, it the- hits the heart, you know? Yep. Randy doesn't need the captain. Or his mustache. <laughs> I'm tired of sucking up and working for the man. And then what does he say? He's like, I don't need your mustache. Don't you condescend to me. Because, <laughs> baby, I am free. <laughs> and then the y'all's most popular oh. Randy and the Captain moments are... Oh, there's a it's a tie. Oh, wow. So this one with eight votes in the buried treasure is, of course... A fan favorite, come on. <laughs> the punctured cup, a.k.a. the baby cub. <laughs> Just imagine the baby, remember the baby cub of lion, don't you ever say that ever again. <laughs> and you can have the receipt. Oh, yep. <laughs> but yes, the I the baby cub thing, I kind of added that. But the punctured cup thing is, it got eight votes for a reason. He's like, and then Randy <laughs> just keeps pu- like covering up the holes. It's and hilarious. Yeah. And then tied for first place is why <laughs> tell me why did a good man 
have to die. Shut down in his prime. Forty-eight or forty-nine. <laughs> Why, Randy? He's not dead. What? He's not dead. Monk's not dead. Oh, yeah. You look disappointed. Well, it's just a really good song. <laughs> Don't worry. Monk will die someday. Yeah, but you won't shoot him. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> okay, guys. So it's time for our personal favorite Randy and Captain moments. And I have quite a few that you guys didn't say. Okay, in the astronaut, as funny as the globe thing was, this is also really funny. So Stottlemyre, like puts together all these clues that like this lady was writing a book. She thinks it might've been, you know, not suicide. He thinks it might've been a murder. And Randy's like, wow, good job, Captain. And he's like, what? Like, he's like, no, no, seriously, I'm awestruck. And he's like, Randy, don't be awestruck. And he's like, I just am. <laughs> Randy, go over there and don't be awestruck. <laughs> he's like, I'm just really proud of you, sir. It's <laughs> really good. Of course, when the captain is shot, um, what about in Mr. Monk in the, I think it's the 12th man and there's so many people have died. So Randy leaves a blank spot and he's like, what is that? And Randy's like, oh, it's a spot for the next victim. And Stoudemire's like, there's not going to be a next victim, Randy. Take that down. <laughs> it's so funny for the next victim. That's so, so wrong. That is so rough stuff. Of course, the captain won't let Randy go trick or treating and, and goes home again. Um, in the jury duty, whenever the uh, Escobar and he's like, he's like, my nose itches. And he's like, uh, he's like, can you scratch it for me? He's like, don't worry. I'll be scratching it myself soon enough. And Randy's like, oh, captain, he said he was going to scratch his nose. (laughs) He's like, okay. And he's like, we said it like a threat. (laughs) (laughs) It's so good. Okay. And then, okay. There's another one too. The traveling dancing zookeeper's daughter. That's the bracelet, right? They're trying to guess. They're like, oh, so maybe she's a zookeeper. Oh, maybe she likes dancing. And then Randy's like, oh, 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 traveling, dancing zookeeper's daughter. And he's like, Randy, it's not a game show. Randy, if the killer turns out to be a traveling, dancing zookeeper's daughter, I'm going to quit my job. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, and then my honorable mention is the kiss from the actor. And my favorite is why... It has to be 48 or 49. (laughs) It has to be. That's the best. That's the best Captain and Randy moment. I think the, the reaction, like, cause it's a, it's also a great Randy moment, but the way that the captain responds to it is like, he can't handle the strumming anymore. (laughs) Randy, how many verses are there? Um, 14 and a bridge. <laughs> God, no, I can't. Okay, Noah, what are your favorite All right. Captain moments? Um, number three, I'm going to have to go with the opposite killer. Okay. The opposite killer is just too good. I love it so much. Nice. Okay, number two is, of course, the stash swap. Come on. You got Yo, all that. That, that is, made me laugh out loud. That I, is hilarious. Did Has anyone ever asked Jason... If that was his real mustache? No way. No way. Right? That doesn't even make sense. It doesn't look real. To no. me, it doesn't look real. But like, that just makes it funnier. It's... Yeah. No, like, it doesn't... It lo- To me, it looks like a real mustache, but it's a real, like, like darky looking, like, little... I don't yeah. know. Like, I don't know if he can grow better facial hair than that. I mean, I think he can. Did we not... When we interviewed him, was he not clean shaven? I think he was clean shaven. Yeah, I don't remember. Actually, I don't remember. <laughs> When, okay, my number one. Number one? one? Okay. When Randy quits. And the captain just really misses his best friend. Aw. Very sad. And he goes and sees him playing the guitar. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm tired of sucking the... <laughs> Star Wars is like, this is about me. Okay. Nice. Okay. Good job, guys. Okay, so when I was compiling the list, I wasn't going to split these up. But there are so many moments, you guys, that you talked about the captain... Like, separate from Randy, I was like, okay, let's split them up. 
So we're going to talk about the captain and Randy. Because I thought that they were going to be like mostly moments together. But you guys had so many separate ones. I was impressed. So good for you guys. Okay. Um, let's start off with the captain. Um, whenever, and Mr. Monk makes a friend. Whenever Hal is going to like basically kill Monk. Stoudemire busts in and he's like, points a gun at him. He's like, step away from my friend. It's a really good moment. And Mr. Monk in On the Run Part 1 when Leland shoots Monk, but it's like fake because he has a, a bulletproof like vest. A, yeah. That is serious. I remember being like, ah! Yeah. Shock factor a good for one. sure. Ooh, this one's a good one. Whenever um, he's in Vegas, whenever they go downstairs and he's trying to figure out like, he keeps saying like they didn't match. They didn't match. All you said was they didn't match. And then... The lady convinces him, like, I'll tell you more if you sing for me. And so he sings, you know, sunshine when she's gone. And she's like, turn around, show me the tush. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. Like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, when he knows Linda is guilty because she lies about Monk, she's like, yeah, he was all over me. He touched it, me. He touched me. <laughs> and Stoudemire's like, really? <laughs> Monk touched, touched you. you. Yep. Whenever in Mr. Monk and the Three Julies, Natalie crashes Leland's car three times. And he's like, there's no shortcut across the creek. Because she <laughs> keeps crashing his car. It's like, I'm so sorry, Captain. And then they go like, another Julie Teager. And she's like, oh my God. And gets in the car and drives away again. And he's like, oh my. <laughs> And Mr. Monk and the captain's wife, when Stottlemyre's starting to realize how it feels to be Monk, and he's like, how it feels to lose his Trudy. Yep. It's it's really sad. Yeah. When there are snakes loose, in literally the beginning, it's in the, always in the credits. Yeah. Or Monk is up on the table, and he's like, there's room on the table, hurry. Yeah. <laughs> Stottlemyre's like, I'm not getting up there. Yep. <laughs> and Mr. Monk takes Manhattan. The jackhammer scene. Do you remember this? When it's like, and Monk's like, I guess I don't really have a, I guess I don't really have a, and it goes on for like a minute straight of, I guess I just don't really have a, it's so messed up. It's so bad. When Stottlemyre is super hyped at the playoff game with all of his buddies and he's there. He's like, go Condor, go Condor, yeah. That's so good. That is good. Um, Whenever he's staying at Monk's house, I think this is in the very old man too, and he freaks out, and and he's like, he's like, I Monk, I just vacuumed, and he's like, that's okay, I'm doing it again, and he's like, well, it's kind of rude, I just vacuumed, and he's like, that's okay, I just like it a certain way, and he's like, unplugs the, he unplugs the vacuum, and Monk is like, the lines, they're all diagonal, <laughs> I'm supposed to live here. <laughs> And then Stottlemyre springs out and he's like, Trudy should be nominated for sainthood. <laughs> and Mr. Monk at the end, Stottlemyre is interrogating this guy and Monk's life is on the line. And Stottlemyre is getting really heated and the guy's like, oh, what are you going to do? Throw a phone book at me? No one throws phone books at people anymore. People use computers now. <laughs> and it cuts to Stottlemyre with a broken computer and he's like, here, your computer crashed. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, we have Mr. Monk in the class reunion slideshow. Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. This is whenever he, like, because Stoudemire come, shows up, cause, I guess, because they're looking for, I guess because they're looking for the person who murdered Edna Carruthers, I guess. And they're showing a slideshow of, like, all the classmates or whatever. And then they start showing pictures of, a like, a riot or a protest and Stottlemyre's in the pictures, and they're, like, from the past. Like, he's he's arresting people, like, throwing them against fences and all this stuff, and it's all pictures of him flashing, and he's, like, trying to ask for everybody's help, and then everyone's like, boo, boo, because he's, <laughs> like, in the pictures. And he's like, um, excuse me, there was a permit expired at noon, <laughs> and I was going, you know, I had to go and arrest them or whatever, and they're like, boo, and then it shows the clock tower, and it says 12.05 on the clock tower, and he's like, like I said... Expired at noon. <laughs> that one's so minute. I love that, that one, though. Hilarious. That's a good one. Um, when Stottlemyre promises to catch the guy who poisoned Monk. That is so sweet. Yeah. And then he's also like, kill him. And he's like, what? 
It's like, I'll kill him. And then he's like, you're lying. Yep, you're lying. And then they like, <laughs> hold hands. Oh, Aww. that's the worst. Okay, guys, your guys' number one favorite Stotty moment is in Mr. Monk in the Panic Room. When they're trying to figure out if Darwin can fire a weapon. And so Randy gives him the gun that's loaded. So Stottlemyre goes into the interrogation room and is trying to intimidate this monkey and taunt him. And he's like banging cymbals. He has a Shriner's hat on. He's blowing a whistle. And he's like, come on, you stupid primate. And then he like takes a sock monkey and he's like, pa, 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 pa. Like slamming it on the table. And the monkey's just like irate. Like, ah, ah, ah. And then, then Randy finally figures out like, oh no, the gun's loaded. And then all of a sudden it's like, Psh, and the glass shatters. And they're like, oh. And so then they figure out, like, Darwin can shoot the gun. But, oh, my gosh, that is hilarious. He's, like, banging cymbals and, like, beep, 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 beep. And he's, like, go away, stupid monkey. And he's, like, he's, like, going around the room, like, ah, I'm, like, pounding on his chest and stuff. It's so good. So, yeah, that's your guys' absolute favorite Stotty moment. And now I will share my personal favorite Stotty moments. Uh, class reunion. Like I said, it was past noon. I love that one. Whenever he's flirting with Linda Fusco and he's like, tell me something I don't know. He says, your elephant can't jump. And she's like, what? And he's like, your elephant can't jump. He said, tell me something I don't know. I love that. Total, total stotty flirt. Oh, when the captain wins the lotto. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I won. I won. I love you, you big, no longer hypothetical <laughs> boat. And he's like, Randy, you still got those student loans? He's like, yeah. And he's like, not anymore. <laughs> he's like, all right. It's so funny. And he's like, and then Monk's like, wait, so do you quit? And he's like, quit? I quit 30 seconds ago when the 56 <laughs> popped out of the machine. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. And then um, mm -hmm. Ain't No Sunshine. That's a classic, guys. That's, that's very classic. And my absolute favorite Stotty moment of the whole series, it's not, it's not a funny one. It's whenever Linda Fusco goes down, and oh, he's yeah. like, "We had everything." And, oh my gosh, his soul is crushed. It is so emotional. Mr. Ted Levine's amazing, obviously, but the captain is just like so vulnerable and raw in that moment, and so upset. And yeah, that's my favorite captain moment. What's yours, Noah? My favorite captain moment, I would say. In the captain's wife, when Monk is or when Cap the captain is starting to realize how Monk feels, and they're both, you know, hashing it out. You know. Yeah, I think he even says like, "I get it, I get it now. Why you are, like that way?" Because I think that's the episode where he has a watch. Monk has the watch, and he's like, "It's time for you to get a new watch," and Monk's like, "No, Trudy gave me this watch," and he's like, "Well, it's been like ten years, so move on." And then at the end, he realizes like he's like, "Don't don't ever throw away that watch." Oh, it's a good one. All right, guys. Now we're on to Randy moments. I'm excited because Randy is obviously super funny. So let's get into it. Uh, you want to go first, Noah? Yeah, sure. Okay. So the first Randy moment is naming the criminal. This is what he said in where I was like, what is he? What does he say? What does he say? He names the criminal in Mr. Monk in the 100th case, the lipstick assassin, the <laughs> lipstick killer, or the cosmetic assassin. <laughs> Yeah, we're not naming the killers. <laughs> Sometimes I like to name the killers. <laughs> um, you guys said, two people said this. I was surprised. Finding the body on the airplane episode, right? Because we discussed this is a bottle episode. Mm -hmm. And Monk is on the plane the whole time, but he has to have Randy at, down below, who's actually finding the body and getting the guy in the end. Mm -hmm. So you guys liked that moment. That was cool. Um, when Randy is singing with Monk in Mr. Monk and the Cult. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's singing again. That's not Monk. <laughs> Father, please protect me. He goes Father, up there for two seconds to like convince me. Monk, and then he starts singing with Monk. <laughs> Father, please, man. <laughs> yep. And Mr. Monk and the Three Julies, when Natalie sits at the table, because um, she needs, she wants protection for Julie. So she's like, Randy, can I ask you a favor? And he's like. Whatever it is, the answer is yes. And she's like, I need a gun. The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, solving the farm case. 
And Mr. Monkey the Foreign Man, Randy refuses the menthol at the murder scene, trying to impress this girl. <laughs> and he's, like, trying not to, like, be disgusted the entire time. It's not my first rodeo. It's not my first rodeo. And then Natalie's like, really, how is that supposed to be attractive? Like... <laughs> Wow, he likes the, the body of the, the, the smell of, of rot- dead bodies. Rot- yeah, <laughs> stench of rotting flesh. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, and Mr. Monk visits a farm whenever Randy solves the case through the hypnosis tape because Monk is like, "Here's what happened." So Randy wakes up and thinks he solved the case, which whatever. But then at the end of the episode, he's sleeping with his files on his chest because he thinks that's how you solve the case. Oh my gosh, what an idiot! <laughs> <laughs> Um, with Randy's big gulp, he always has to pee all the time. Yep. He's like, he's like, is that it? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. I think that's all the questions we have. Yep. (laughs) Like, is there a bathroom here? (laughs) Yep. Oh, and Mr. Monk in the playoffs, whenever he watches the game upside down on the big screen. Oh, yes. That's funny. Oh, my God. He's such an idiot. That's that's probably one of his most idiotic moments. I love that. Um, the silver man at the bank, and then afterwards... Randy tries to become the silver man. <laughs> yep, that's a good one. Oh my gosh, this one's in Mr. Monk gets fired when Karen's making a movie, like a documentary about Leland and the station and stuff. At the end, Randy has like the tag for the thing and he's like, it's like, yeah, through my eyes are justified. That's my life. My life behind the badge. <laughs> and then it says like Karen Stottlemyre films, whatever. And it's all, it's so cheesy and it's, the font is terrible. It's like all cursive and stuff. It's so bad. But it's, it's so bad and funny. Okay. So Stottlemyre and Randy are like at this like deal or whatever. And the guy's like, are you guys wearing a wire? And Randy unbuttons his shirt and takes off his pants. <laughs> so he pulls him down. <laughs> And, and then, and he's like, well, what about you? And Sotomar, like, pats his shirt, and he's like, nope. And then Randy's like, why did I take off my pants? <laughs> That's what everyone here is asking that same question. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, the next one is the one-man band in Mr. Monk and the really dead guy. They're trying to, like, draw the serial killer out, I guess? Or Randy's supposed to be undercover? I'm not really sure. But Randy's, like, dressed, he has, like, the bass drum and cymbals and, like, a tambourine and all this stuff. He's, like, a one-man band, like, playing in the, like, middle of the courtyard or something. That's funny. Um, when Randy, <laughs> when Randy runs into the garage and shoots Togo because he thinks he's controlling everyone. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that is terrible. That is so cringy. Oh, my gosh, that's one of my least favorite. I I can't believe that he's like thinks he's like the robots have taken over i knew it (laughs) he starts shooting him oh my gosh it's so dumb um and mr monk and his biggest fan whenever randy's been playing jingo with that kid and then at the end he like has all the two by fours and he like takes him out like jingo style takedown and punches the the wood and then like knocks the guy out on the other side yeah oh that is hilarious in the same episode as the Jenga takedown, there's the bachelor auction, and Randy is strutting his stuff with his strip tees. I think he has a boombox. <laughs> yeah. He brings a boombox, and then of he's like, he does. and then he's like, "Do you want to take this off?" And the lady's like, "Oh no, that's okay." And he's like, <laughs> he like unbuttons his shirt and does it. It's so funny. Oh my gosh. The next one is in the fashion show when the guy, like, I think he takes an interest in Randy. And so Randy starts like dressing in like Italian suits, and then Randy, and then Stalmar's like, "Hey, write this down." And he's like, "Oh, I don't have my notebook." And he's like, "Where is it?" And he's like, "Well, it didn't really go with the suit. <laughs> <laughs> Made lines on the suit. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so messed up. It's so dumb." Oh. Randy, whenever they're trying to like make sense of the fat suit and like how it would work, and he's like standing on the chair and it's fat suit. That is hilarious. I yeah, love that. you guys like the fat suit too. Um, and then we have. The three Julies. And you guys didn't really have a favorite one, but this is the last one that's on the list, which is in the three Julies when he dresses up as the suspect's dead mother. And of course, you know, he goes through the whole thing. Like the, um, before they get in there, they, they want to have like a code word, like a safe word. And like, yeah, that's a good idea. And Monk's like, you know, wish there were 10 of them. And, and Randy's like, how about mother of God? He has a knife. (laughs) <laughs> it's like no no you like, have to work into conversation and then of course they go through the whole deal <laughs> but 
yeah, that's a, that's a good moment too. So I'll, I'll do my personal ones real quick and Noah, you, you get yours ready. All right. So the first one is when Monk can't see a thing and he's blind. And so Randy is like, Hey Monk, this is Randy Disher and I'm speaking to you. I'm crouching down about six inches away <laughs> and I'm speaking to you. And he's like, Randy, you don't have to tell him you're speaking to him. <laughs> Speak to him. <laughs> so stupid. Um, of course, under the limo, that's where, where the, the surprise surprises. is. Under you see, like, oh, we're giving prizes. <laughs> that one is amazing. Man, you gotta be the whitest white boy I've ever seen. <laughs> what is this, good cop, Dominican cop? <laughs> Of course, this is my honorable mention, which is the personal ad for Sharona. <laughs> That's me. Uh, not, everything's about you, conceited. <laughs> and then my favorite one, which I kind of sidestepped there at the end, because it's my favorite. Three Julies and the code word. That is the best thing ever. And Monk's like, how about I wish there were 10 of them? He's like, no, it's got to be natural in the conversation. And he's like, I've heard people say that in conversation. And he's like, no, how about... Better late than never. He's like, okay, got it. He's like, what is it? And he's like, uh, and he's like, better late. Than- yeah, yeah, yeah. Better late than never. And he's like, okay. And then so when he gets in there and the guy's like on his lab trying to hold him and he starts freaking out. He's like, he's like, first come, first serve. First yeah. come, first serve. And there's like, what? And he's like, I wish there were 10 of them. And he's like, that's good enough for me. And they bust in. That is my absolute favorite Randy moment. That is... <laughs> that is golden. I love that. Okay, Noah, how about you? What are your favorite Randy moments? Okay. Um, number three, I have to say shooting Togo. That makes oh me laugh gosh, every time. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. Okay. You hate that I so do, much. I but it is do. hilarious how he just is so confident in Togo taking over the human race. <laughs> that is terrible. Okay, what's your second um, one? Um, are you wearing a wire? Of course. Oh my god, that's take so good. all of his clothes. Oh, you know what? Sorry to interrupt. There's another one in the hospital episode. Whenever he does the same thing, like Monk has the same bruise on his shin from hitting the coffee table. So Monk pulls up his leg, like his pant leg, and then Randy like starts unbuckling and like pulls, like starts to pull his pants down. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, showing you my bruise. And he's like, yeah, but pull your leg pant up. And he's like, I'm already unbuckled. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Okay. What's your favorite one? Singing with Monk in the cold. That makes me that makes me laugh oh. every single time. He goes up there to like, I don't know, convince Monk that he's wrong. And then like five minutes in, he's already singing with Monk. And he's naked. And he's he has naked. his arms crossed and his legs crossed sitting like on a pillow on the ground. It is so funny. Oh, like holding himself with his eyes closed. Like it's, it is a trifecta. It is so funny. <laughs> that is a, that's a great, that's a great one. Okay. Um. So next is Sharona. We're on to our assistants now. Of course, we'll start with the first first assistant. Okay, so not too many Sharona moments, though, because Sharona wasn't there for too long. Mm-hmm. So um, the first one is they're at the couple's retreat and gets married, and Sharona is sleeping in a tent on the floor. <laughs> a couple of people mentioned that one. How Sharona is always seeking up her monk. Yeah. That is just so amazing every time yeah and then also sharona and natalie fighting over monk that was a big episode that was a big moment you guys oh, liked yeah, for sure um sharona not letting benji show off mr monk and boast him to all of his friends <laughs> he likes it <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one um when she hugs monk after meeting ambrose because she like realizes like this is why you're so screwed up mm-hmm. um all of the shade shown out thrown at randy through every time we ever see them interact, she always has to throw some shade. Yep, that's true. You can't even get your own mother to go home with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Oh, this one's a good one. Making hot cocoa in the circus. I think Lindsay submitted this one. I was like, oh, that one's good. So Sharona's scared of the elephants, right? Mm-hmm. And so Sharona and Monk are the ones that see the guy get his head crushed. And Sharona's like already afraid of the elephants. So she sees it. Then she's traumatized. So it cuts to her like on the couch with a blanket on. And he's like trying to, Monk's trying to make her hot cocoa. And he's like, how, what is a dollop? How much is a dollop? She's like, I think it's a little more than a, a spoonful or something. He's like, I can't. Okay. And then she's like, how many, like, like, what do you want? He's like, I can't. This is impossible. I can't make this. <laughs> This is impossible to make. And she's like, fine, I'll do it. And then so he sits down and puts the blanket on. And Sharona starts making (laughs) making it. (laughs) How many marshmallows do you want? (laughs) Eight. Okay. 
That's that's a really cute one. She just like Shona's so tough, and she flips it around, mm-hmm. and Monk makes it all about him. <laughs> And Mr. Monk and the Girl Who Cried Wolf, Sharona goes to Dr. Kroger and gets therapy. And it's a nice little switcheroo. Yeah. Bitty Shram. Oof. Yeah. This one's a really good one. The Monk, <laughs> when her and Monk are playing chess, and she doesn't want him to like win, so she picks up his queen and licks it and puts <laughs> it down. And he's like, what? You can't touch other people's pieces. And she's like, What? You have been sexually harassing every piece on this board. <laughs> He's like, it's an unwritten rule. You can't lick somebody's queen. And she's like, there's an unwritten licking the queen rule. <laughs> that one's so good. Um, in Mr. Monk Goes to Mexico, there's the party beads that you get whenever you flash people. <laughs> but but uh, Sharona was drunk the night before, so she has no idea what these beads mean. And she has like hundreds of them <laughs> yeah, she's like sporting them because at the end the guy's like oh you have a lot of beads and she's like oh yeah i don't think so i like them or something he's like you know how you got those right or something and she's like what and she's like oh my god let's get the hell out of here <laughs> it's so funny that's a good one um oh my gosh this is an amazing scene um in mr muck in the carnival this is the one where he has this like first reinstatement hearing ever he wants to like not look incapable mm-hmm. so he wants to drive But Sharona drives him. He doesn't drive. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, let's let me drive. And she's like, get in the car. And he's like, yeah, I want to drive. She's like, I'm not letting you drive my car. You don't know how to drive. And he's like, yes, I do. Just let me drive. And she's like, he's like, they're probably staring out the window right now. Don't, don't look, don't look. And she's like, well, maybe I'm driving you home because you're tired. And he's like, I'm I'm tired. It's nine o'clock in the morning. (laughs) And he's like, I would have already had to establish being tired. I would have had to have yawned during the meeting. And she's like, well, start yawning now. He, you, you always have to start yawning at some point. And he's like, just let me drive. It's so funny. And they have this whole dialogue. It's so, it is so funny. And then he ends up driving and wrecks her car. <laughs> and Mr. Monk goes to the asylum. Sharona, like the little genius she is, sneaks a glow-in-the-dark photo that whenever it's like red in the dark... Glows a little message to Monk. Yeah, that was a really good Very Sharona smart. scheme, yep. And then, oh, this is a good one. Um, whenever she, in Mr. Monk and the Playboy, she's talking to Benji about, like, how this guy's blackmailing her with some bad pictures. And, like, you know, she just oh, wants yeah. him to be, like, like okay with it. And he's like, Mom, is he a bad guy? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, well, then who cares about stupid pictures? And she's like... Have I told you I loved you today? And she's like, or have I told you how much I love you? He's like, not today. Uh, <laughs> and then she's like, okay. And they're both cr- like, she's crying. Oh my gosh, sweet. that's a really good point. Okay, um, we have two more Sharona moments here. Okay, oh. I guess I'll go. And Mr. Monk in the Circus, Sharona has this fear of elephants, and Monk is like, really? A fear of elephants after Monk has all these different fears, yep. and he's like, suck it up. <laughs> She's like, did you just tell me to suck it up? And then so she tells him, suck it up for the whole rest of the episode. She like takes his water bottle and drinks it and gives it back to him. And she's like, suck it up. (laughs) It's so good. Okay, guys, your final, your favorite, favorite Sharona moment was when she says, and Mr. Monk gets fired, 70% is good enough for me. And she jumps on the back of the commissioner and rips off his toupee Amazing. and reveals, she's like holding on for dear life. And she's yeah, she's trying to yank it off. <laughs> and she finally rips it off and everyone's like, oh. So, Dang. yep. That's a fantastic Sharona moment. Um, my favorite Sharona moments are... Of course, 70%. That's definitely high on my list. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, in the theater, whenever Sharona, like, her basically her takedown moment, she's like, shut up, witch. Show's over. <laughs> epic, epic. When she's crying with Benji. Whenever she is... this. Okay, this was my honorable mention. Whenever Monk in the carnival, he misses his reinstatement hearing because I guess Stottlemyre doesn't recommend him or whatever. So he's, like, devastated. And he's like, I just want to be alone. And Sharon was like, okay, I'll come with you. It's so sad. It, sho- it shows a really good assistant moment. And also, like, she's tough and she's super sweet. So my favorite, favorite one has to be Mr. Monk in the Asylum when she is flirting with Chet. And she cons him. And she's like, oh, yeah, I saw this guy oh. at, at a party. Uh, he told me to look for Chet. He said you were cool. And he's like, oh, Ross Tillman said I was cool? 
And she's like, was he wrong? <laughs> it's so, oh my gosh, it's so the best. He's like, um, Ross Tillman, he was tall with glasses. <laughs> And he's like, oh, yeah, Ross Tillman said I was cool. And she's like, yeah, was he wrong? <laughs> so good. And then later she, he's like, oh, so what are you looking up? And she's like, hey, Ross said you were cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that moment so much. That is such a good moment. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll go. Of course, Dodoy, 70% is good enough for me. Yeah. Of course, of course. The Mardi Gras V's in Mexico. Yes. Dodoy. And... All the shade thrown at Randy just throughout the series is yeah. always a hit for me. Hilarious yep. every time. Yep. Yep. The Randy flirt. You love the little drops I love of. The Randy flirt. Yep. That's good. Okay. Our last one is Natalie, Miss Natalie Teeger. The first one is There is No Shortcut Across the Creek. And Mr. Monk gets drunk. The Kissing Fern. Kiss, kiss me underneath the missing kissing fern. <laughs> Baby. Baby. The hanging plant. The hanging the plant. Fern. That's so good. When she eats page 73. In Mr. Monk and the Wedding, whenever Natalie's sister-in-law, is it? Or mm-hmm. technically mm-hmm. sister-in-law, mm-hmm. Um, is like sabotaging the wedding or whatever she's the murderer she's the murderer she's sabotaging people killing them whatever and natalie figures it out and so she puts her heel on her neck she says stay away from my family we have enough problems yeah (laughs) that's the that's the natalie takedown that's got to be like that's sharona's like version of shut up show's over yeah that's her big takedown i think um, whenever she tries to solve the case, and well, I mean, she does, when she solves the case and stays in bed, like she does Monk's job for him the whole episode. Um, when Monk says he doesn't have any friends and she's like, I'm your friend. Yeah. Very sweet. Um, when Natalie returns to Monk in the class reunion, after she figures out they're calling him Captain Cool and he's not for... Captain Cool. Not not for that reason. <laughs> not for the reasons you'd think. Um, Natalie being scared to death in the voodoo curse. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, when she shoots Monk in the other leg. <laughs> in his good leg and Mr. Monk on wheels. Um, I also have to say Mr. Monk on wheels when she has to push him around everywhere. Yeah. That is so sad. And she starts crying because the cans drop. <laughs> Natalie, Natalie. She's like, I'm sorry, Mr. Monk. And then he starts rolling down the hill. <laughs> Yeah, that is that is a good episode. <laughs> <laughs> and Natalie's first ever scene in Mr. Monk and the Red Herring, she kills a man with scissors. Yeah. That's insane. That was intense. Yeah, and then in the election, she confides in Monk about Mitch's Navy story, that he's like a coward and stuff, which not really like that moment personally, but um, somebody liked it <laughs> for some reason. Um, Monk first meets natalie she puts out a fire for him because he doesn't know how to use a fire extinguisher no he's he's yeah well he's doing he's it like exactly exact measurements. it's an approximation well they should really put that on the can <laughs> oh that's a funny one um no id mm-hmm. in the jury duty of course no need i say more ID. natalie at, in mr monk at the end when she's taking care of monk when he's dying yep Very um sweet. And Mr. Monk paints his masterpiece at the end whenever her painting with the mustache is the only evidence they have left. And so she tries to run and throw it in the fire. And they're like, Natalie, no. And they like grab her around the waist. And she's like swinging it around. And she's like, no. And she's trying to burn it. That's really funny. Um, When they go out Christmas caroling. And why do they even do? They're staking out this building. Like they're, they're trying to find a guy. Like lure him out. So there's something. Go Christmas caroling. They go, I, well, they go to his house to like s- go to use their bathroom. Uh-huh. And so they go like, oh, and they're singing. And then they go, oh, can I use your bathroom? So that they can snoop around. Yeah. That's in the secret. That's pretty thing. smart, actually. Yeah. Of course, just being the lottery hostess that was... in Lotto Fever. That's and good. And then she gets her big head about it. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. that, though. Um, the blender scene in On the Run. Mm-hmm. A couple hilarious. votes for that. Yeah, absolutely hilarious. How did that not win? That's hilarious. I love that. I know. That's that's I know, right? That's interesting. I love that. Her giving Ambrose a maybe and goes home again. 
Oh, she's like, I'm not saying no, I'm so saying maybe sweet. or whatever. Cute. Mr. Monk and the leper, she kisses a leper. A real leper. A real leper. Not your leper, my leper. It's gross. <laughs> yep. And Mr. Monk is on air whenever they're watching like the home videos, uh, like with him and Ambrose, like how they never smile and they're not funny and all this stuff. And Natalie gives him a hug. It's like the same way she hugs, Sharona hugs him after meeting Ambrose. Like, I understand why you're the way that you are. She hugs him. Because remember, Kevin Dorfman is there. And then Kevin comes and gives them all, both a hug. So they're like, I have a group hug going on. It's mm. cute. That is cute. And then we have our final Natalie moments. Your guys' favorite in second place. You want to say it, Noah? Sure. And Mr. Monk on the run. She kisses Monk's face after finding him alive at the car wash. She's so yeah. happy that he's alive. Yeah. Which I would have to negate that one just because she led Sheriff Rollins there, but whatever. For real, though. <laughs> For real. You <laughs> one job. But your guys' absolute favorite Natalie moment is when Natalie throws him his 50th birthday party. And happy birthday, Mr. Monk. And she hires Hank. Cowboy Hank. Cowboy Hank. I do love a good Cowboy Hank reference. <laughs> yep. Okay, my favorite Natalie moments are... The birthday. I mean, you can't really deny it. it's probably like the best assistant move that she does. Oh yeah. Um, the class reunion. Whenever she goes back for him, that's really really sweet. Uh, gets his badge, and they're like super giddy, and she's like, "Don't want to shoot anybody with a bullet. You might give him an infection." And they're like, "Oh, we're so funny!" Like they're so giddy. Oh, I love that. genuine <laughs> happiness from the two of them. I love. That. I also put this is my honorable mention. You want a hot toddy and mustard? <laughs> I brought Cobb salad. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Because, like, I know everybody put no ID, but I put Cobb salad. <laughs> I love the Cobb salad. It's so funny. There's a body in the dumpster. <laughs> you want a hot toddy and mustard? <laughs> I brought a Cobb salad. <laughs> okay, my number one Natalie moment, which is... My favorite, which I think is the best Natalie scheme ever, is when she's pregnant, Natalie. When pregnant she, Natalie? When she goes to basically, like, deter Buchanan from, like, hitting on her because he's a super creep. And she needs to tell Monk, like, here's what happened. And she's pregnant. I mean, she's obviously pregnant in real life, but but she's pregnant, Natalie. She's, she's like, it's a pillow. Out. I love that. But it's not a pillow. <laughs> it really isn't a pillow. Yeah. And I don't know why they didn't put, like, a fake Pillow? I feel like they could have made it look fake, even though it was real. What? How? It looked way too real for it to be a pillow, oh. you know? Okay. Know. Okay. Um, okay. So. Natalie's your girl. So what's your favorite Natalie moments? Ah, It's just so hard to do. I'd say my number three would have to be no idea. Yeah. Just, it's so classic. Yeah. It is so classic. Like. It's one of those. She holds we... Randy. Wait. <laughs> no. I. I... And then grabs him and they hold each other and like. D. D. Yep. Okay. Just... Oh, it's hilarious. Yep. Um, and then number two, I has to be the blender scene. Also has Randy in it. Yep. Amazing, amazing. And then number one, Natalie Teagerb. Oh my gosh, I that's love a great Natalie one. Teagerb. No, that's a great one. Oh my gosh, I love that one. <laughs> I guess you have a date, Natalie Teeger. <laughs> so good. All right, I like that. Okay, now we are moving on to curses slash dislikes. Okay, we're going to start our dislikes with some unpopular opinions. So we're basically just going to go through these and say if we agree with them, disagree with them, or even if they are unpopular opinions. So... Um, cause like this first one, five different people said it. So I'm like, is it unpopular? Probably not. Maybe not. Is I didn't care for Sharona. Five I mean, people said I mean, that? I don't think it's an unpopular opinion. Just, I mean, based on the sheer number of people who said it. How can you say that? I mean, a that? lot of people think that he, she was just mean. I completely and utterly disagree. Obviously, That's I'm a Sharona so girl. messed up. But yeah. Okay. Do you want to read the next one? I no, I would like to oh. say oh, okay. for all my Natalie, my fellow Natalie lovers, just because we love Natalie more than Sharona, that does not let you hate on Sharona, okay? Sharona is 
just as good or i mean well i mean a smidge under like in your opinion a smidge yeah yeah Yeah. yeah, for sure but like come on she's the next best thing well what's weird is how do you even like get into i mean i guess obviously like you watch natalie first but i'm like but how do you even like appreciate monk if you don't like sharona in the first place how did you get past the first three seasons yeah if you didn't like sharona like how did the show like if really i mean i guess that would be that would make it an unpopular opinion but so many people feel that way that it's just weird that's yeah that's crazy but yeah okay next one i could not stand natalie okay for all my sharona people (laughs) (laughs) you better say that (laughs) um what noah said in reverse okay um i can honestly i can see i can see it though because no, but this is the thing. This is the, and this if is you've the, grown attached to Sharona. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But I guess it'd be the same thing if you grow attached to Natalie and then you rewatch it. So, but I mean, Natalie is just really vanilla. So maybe just being like, wow, okay. I, was just, I literally stood up for you and everything. Okay. I, well, I said, I said, that's I think so mean of listen, you. What, hang on. No, hold that's the phone. incredibly rude. Hold the phone. I said. People think Sharona is really mean to Monk. Like she's brash and mean to Monk. So I think that is why. I'm saying why I conjecture why people wouldn't like Natalie. is Maybe because she's more bland of a character. Like Sharona has like... Wow! Sharona's just very like distinctive in her clothing, her hair, her accent, and like very bold. So maybe they don't like Natalie because of that? I don't know. I didn't write the opinion. I was just saying. I understand maybe. that, but really. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. I um, stood up for you. Could you imagine? I'm like, why would you ever hate on her? She's the best. And you're like, well, we hate you too. And it's like, <laughs> and you just say nothing. You're like, I kind of agree. I also hate him. That's so mean. Okay. How about we move on to the next one, which is flipped on its head. <gasps> Monk could be overly mean to Sharona and Natalie. Could be like at like, some point, yeah. He was Monk could be overly mean to Sharona and Natalie. What do you think well, about that? No, duh. Oh, okay. How is that an unpopular opinion? That just is a fact. Monk is overly mean to them constantly. Really? Pretty much. I didn't think he was mean to them. I think most of the things that he does is out of his like part of his disability. Like, part of his, like, Lack of, his social interaction. Yeah. Like, he's not trying to be mean to them. Like, even in On Wheels, like, he's not trying to be mean to Natalie. I don't think. He wouldn't, he's like, even someone's like, don't you think you're being kind of mean? And he's like, what? That's our relationship. Like, he doesn't see it. He's not trying to be mean. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I think. Okay, do you want to read the next one? I don't know. Okay. First of all, I am appalled. The show didn't need Benji or Julie. Well, I'm going to say the next one because it's related to that one, I think. Okay. Is uh, to replace Sharona with another single mom was a bit cheesy. I feel like those are related just because it's like, you're saying the show didn't need Benji or Julie. So like, like this person is saying like, okay, maybe Sharona had a kid, but also replacing her with Natalie who has a kid. I Mm. think, uh, this is my opinion on the single mom thing is like, I think that it makes sense that because if it was just Sharona or just Natalie, for one, you would definitely ship them. Mm-hmm. Like, how would you not ship a, this single woman and the single man? Yeah. It, it's more of the, like, she has a family and she has a life. Monk is the one that doesn't have a life. If Sharona or Natalie doesn't have a kid waiting for them at home or responsibility, then like, they're, then they both don't have a life. Monk is different because he has no family. Like he and he, all he does is do detective work. These ladies have other obligations besides Monk. I don't. I think that the kids the are. Ne- way, I think the kids are necessary. The only way the character could work, and the, as as a mom, because I mean she could just be a wife. The fact oh, that they're both like she's single. married. Oh, like she yeah. could be married. She could be married. Yeah, she doesn't have to be a single mom. That's that's true. I just think it gives. An angle of vulnerability to the character that makes you like them and respect them. Like, oh, they're a single mom. They're a single mother. Like, mad respect. But, like... Yeah, I think so, too. Uh Uh-huh. 
And also, like, it also gives a fun, like, you get to see Julie and you get to see Benji. And sure, the show didn't need Benji or Julie, yeah. but I get, they I definitely agree with that. Yeah, makes sense. They definitely helped it and struck our hearts for sure. They added, yes, they them. added to the dynamics. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's a good point. No, I like that. Okay. They, they make a good episode great. That's a fact. Okay, you want to read the next one? Sure. Um, Captain Sotomayor was better off without that crazy hippie videotaking wife of his, Karen. Okay, first of all, I liked Karen. And I think I might have said in an earlier date that I did not like Karen. <laughs> which, my, I feel like that's, funny. that's changed since then. I liked Karen, okay? Sure, she could be a little annoying sometimes and her voice was like not it i don't know <laughs> was not it okay, yeah uh-huh. <laughs> but i don't know i do like couples that are like not alike at all yeah that is like fun for yeah me. i agree with that nathan yeah. and Haley scott perfect couple well i mean they're i don't think they're as opposite as like she literally, I, he he's got a point. Like she was a hippie, and, and Sotomar is a gun carrying police officer. They were <laughs> very, they were very very opposite. But I think I I like love the episode where she buys him like the fountain and everything, and he doesn't use it, and then she he like pours coffee in it and all this stuff to like make it seem like he's in like he loves her yeah like he loves her just because they're opposite doesn't mean he doesn't love her. He has a problem realizing like as we saw like when they get divorced like you're accusing me of cheating on you and you think that's okay and like that's why we're getting a divorce like we have more problems than our oppositeness people who are opposites can work uh-huh it's 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 yeah it's more than that so i i i liked it i liked that she was married because nobody else like stoudemire was married because nobody else was married yeah. And so it gave that like dynamic and then it was like, okay, now he can have a girlfriend and all that. So I liked Karen too. I, I no, I did like Karen. It's just that I also liked like Linda Fusco like infinitely more. Oh no, yeah. I didn't mind that they got a divorce. I thought it was a good, like, really off storyline because like there's not a lot of storylines in Monk. Oh yeah. So like the fact that the captain is married has a wife he doesn't really get along with and then they get a divorce isn't surprising or devastating or really anything. It definitely, it's just a good story. It, yeah, it just moves the story forward. And yeah, I, I think so. It was needed. Okay, the next one is, I didn't like the character of Monk's dad when he finally came back. Mm, I think they could have made him better. I didn't... I don't disagree with you. Like, I don't love the character. But I think they definitely could have made him a more prominent character and at least given him another episode read the next one there should have been more jack senior thank you <laughs> okay that's not even an unpopular opinion i feel like that's just the fact i think that the first one's not an unpopular opinion i think there's a lot of people that like didn't like no, monk's dad yeah i feel like you're supposed to not like monk's dad he's supposed to be the reason monk is weird yes good and point noah he's supposed to be a jerk that's and, a good point, yeah. And there definitely should have been more of Jack Sr. becoming more of a father figure to Monk and, like, I don't know, being in Christmas specials. And that would be fun to see. Yeah. I wonder if there would have been a way to make Ambrose and Jack Monk in the same thing. I would have or, loved or, to see that. That would have been good, but also it might have been easier to do with Jack Monk and Jack Monk Jr. together. Like some storyline where they're together, you know? Yeah. I didn't like I didn't like Monk's dad, but I really like how you just literally said you're not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you are. So I, I think that's a good point. Monk sometimes seems extremely stingy and didn't pay Natalie enough money to provide for her family. I and agree. I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. I think it's just ex- it's just, that's just it. he's extremely stingy and didn't pay Natalie enough. Yeah, and that's just how it is. That seems like a fact. <laughs> it seems like a, that's like a non-opinion. I feel like that's the point. Yeah, he, he that's like mentioned like seven times. Yeah, two people said that too. That's crazy. Yeah, um, Monk being involved with Sharona or Natalie is a big no. Um, I can see how this is an unpopular. Actually, no. I feel like 
the the fan base. That's a popular is, opinion. Is a pop. That's more of a popular opinion for sure. Yeah. I feel like it's like eighty twenty. I feel like. Yeah. That seems accurate. Yeah. And that then, people would ship them twenty percent of people. Yeah. And how many percentages of that twenty ship Sharona over Natalie? You know, like. Ew. I I doubt anyone ships Sharona over Natalie. That's what I was thinking. And then the 0.1% that still ships shadily. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm part of that 0.1%. I'm here for shadily action. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, the next one is after, Tr- after Trudy's death, Monk loses his ability to fall in love again. None of his crushes were real. Mm, I think he fell in love with Molly. That's... But... With Molly? Oh, that... F- oh, for sure. But in a um, romantic way? I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, we obviously didn't see the series continue. So, like, if Molly helped him repair his love ability, like, then maybe he could have. But I I do agree that the, the crushes on the show were not real. Well, see, not the crushes weren't real. I think they were crushes. crushes. I think they were crushes. I don't think he actually fell in love. So he crushed on the girl in the blackout. He crushed on the girl and the other woman, Monica Waters. I remember that. And then, um... That's the one with the the neighbor? Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. And then the Zeminian girl. Layla. Layla. So, like, three, yeah. If you don't Mm -hmm. count his wife, Cora, that he was married to. (laughs) I'm just kidding. It's Cora. The crazy one in Mr. Monk Bumps' his head. Oh. His wife. I do love Cora. Um, mm. So do you think he lost his ability to fall in love again? I, I mean, sure. But there's no really way to prove that. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think the crushes were... I think the crushes themselves were real. That he never fell in love with any of them. I don't... I don't I don't know. He could I don't have know about that one. I really don't. With any one of those women. I think I I think I might think that this is an unpo- unpopular opinion. This I'm, is? Yeah. I don't think that he loses his ability to fall in love again. I feel like I he could think. if he tried. I think he could. Yeah. I don't think he'd ever love any way that he loves Trudy. But that doesn't mean that he can't fall in love again. That's what I'm going with. So. Hmm. Okay. Next one. Lieutenant. I'm... There's no way. Lieutenant Disher is not funny. That is an unpopular opinion. Three right people said that. Thank you. Thank you. That's, Three, the, that's that is, the next under the I like don't care for Sharona. The second actual unpopular opinion. Yeah, that is an unpopular opinion right there. And it's just false. Yeah, that is, <laughs> that is false. How? Uh, that, that is false. They have some monk humor right here. That's the point. I mean, like, that's the point of, like, he's supposed to be funny and he is funny. He's hilarious. He's the, like, comic relief. Like, Monk is, like, cringy funny because you're like, oh, that's sad. And Lieutenant Disher is actually funny, funny funny. Yeah, he's, he's dumb hilarious. funny. Yeah. Totally disagree. Um, totally next disagree. one. Honestly, his Trudy obsession. Yes, I get he has OCD and he's socially impaired, but it got disturbing at times. Agreed. I agree with you. Ooh. You do not? I think that's an unpopular opinion. You don't agree with that? Mm-hmm. Um, no, a Trudy really. pillow that is disgusting. What? That is disgusting. Disgusting. It just smells like her. Ew! Stra- don't it smells, say. It smells like her don't strawberry say that shampoo. Nonchalantly. It smells like her strawberry shampoo. It's not like it smells like her skin cells. Like it so smells Monk like it her, probably did. It so. smells like her shampoo that she had worn. Ew! Oh my gosh! That's okay. Disgusting. I'll give you a good example for yourself. Is the foreign man? Whenever he mixes Trudy and Ansara. That is And you did not like that. That bugs me. I didn't mind it. So much. I didn't mind it. Okay, next one. Didn't like the Marcy episodes. That is straight cap. I think that is... I think that could be a 50-50... Like I don't think no I don't think way. that's unpopular. That's an unpopular opinion. I don't right think there. that's no, that's so, unpopular. I think a lot of people didn't like Marcy because how like just like the last one, <laughs> the obsession. Honestly, the monk obsession. Her monk obsession was creepy and disturbing. It was not and creepy, I th- and I it think was a lot of people didn't like it. Hilarious. I loved Marcy. I loved every second she was on the screen. I mean, I agree with that, but I just think that it's not that of an unpopular opinion. Just. 
Um, the next one says, I wish he would stay on the force and finally get the recognition he deserved after all these years. I don't think that's unpopular. I feel like a lot of people wished we could have seen Monk be on the force. I feel like a lot of people would think that it needs to stay the same. Like, regardless of how good or bad the badge episode is, like, how quick it was and how quick he lost it, I feel like people would want it to, truly want it to stay the same, not to see him on the force. Uh, I think we disagree about this one. Either that or they could have gotten the badge episode over with a long time ago instead of waiting until, what is that, final three episodes? Mm -hmm. To literally be like, oh, well, the thing we've been working for this entire time... Is useless. He didn't even want it all along. Like. Yeah. It's just messed up. Yeah. It's just seriously messed up to me. Okay. And I like it. All right. Um, I feel like the show didn't really get its groove until the late second season. I agree. Actually, maybe f- I would say third season. Well, we will get into this later when we talk about our favorite seasons and what we think are the best seasons. But I would just agree. Well, Okay. I would agree in the sense of, like, can you really get into the, quote, groove of something unless you've been doing it for a while? Like, that inherently by saying getting in the groove means it takes time to get into a groove. But, I mean, Monk got renewed for a second season after, like, the first episode. Because it had, like, two million viewers or something like that. So, it definitely started off hot. Yeah. Like, and if you, like, the first few episodes, I mean, I think are pretty dang good. And there, there are they're good, not my favorite. They're not. Well, that's the thing is like, but I think that's in comparison to if Monk had, if Monk was like season one and had stayed like season one the rest of the time, I don't think that anybody would be like, this show sucks. It'd still be a great show. It just changed and morphed a little bit over time. And we tend to like some of the later episodes, but that doesn't mean that it didn't get its groove till late second season. Because a lot of the episodes are good in the beginning of the second season too. Mm -hmm. Like Mexico gets fired theater. Like there's a bunch in the beginning of just second season that are good. Mm -hmm. So I just don't agree with the late second season comment. Uh, I personally personally. think that if there, if they didn't go into a more comedic side of the show and we kept the weird, like very serious vibes of the first season Mm -hmm. um we would not be here making a podcast about this that and that people would not be here listening and that's oh well i don't think that that's true i think it still would have been an absolutely amazing show i think it would just give off less family friendly vibes than if it stayed dark like it was i think it would i think it'd be more of an adult show i would like to see show I would like to see Monk as a rated R show. That should have been Whoa, an unpopular hey, opinion. Whoa, oh, okay. I That's... know, I know. That, that, that would be a really good unpopular opinion. Okay. Okay, the last one is... I'm um, not sure this the is an opinion, but I didn't like that they had an episode with the actor from Wings because Tony Shalhoub was in Wings. So technically that show should not exist in the Monk universe. If that actor exists, then Tony Shalhoub also exists. Which creates a sort of paradox. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It's a sly freaking thing, and you're reading into it it's way too hard for no reason. They have a point. I mean, like, they have a technical point, no, they- I, which honestly I never thought of for some reason. And so I was like, huh, that's interesting. But I would agree that you'd read into it. I mean, I agree that's a disp- an unpopular opinion. Because what the opinion is, I didn't like that episode because... Of that reason. That's an unpopular opinion, I feel like. I I think most people would look past that, so. But yeah, I I, I don't know. I don't believe it creates this sort of paradox because it's TV and there really isn't a paradox in the television. And because Monk isn't real, guys. (laughs) I hate to break it to you. Okay. Oh, you're crushing everyone's hopes and dreams. (laughs) Calm down. Okay, guys. So our second segment for curses is going to be a good one. And it's our least favorite episodes. Okay, so we're just going to read these off. So this, if you hear the name of an episode, that means that someone wrote this down as their least favorite episode. Episode. Just to be clear. Okay, ready? Here we go. Little Monk. Whoa. Okay, okay. Um, Lotto Fever. 
Wow. Whoa. Okay, whoa. Genius. Whoa. Critic, what? Underwater. Understandable. Okay, okay. Understandable. Okay. Um, meets his dad. I could see that. I could also see that. The miracle. Why? I mean, it's definitely not I, the weakest Christmas episode. I That's strange to pick that one, I feel it like. It really is strange. Um, Cobra. I a thousand percent could see that. What? What's Honestly, what's I'm gonna spoiler alert, kind of, sort of. I, I thought this was gonna be my least favorite episode easily. Because it has been forever, but whenever I took like a look at the list, I was like, no, there's definitely worse episodes, but this has been on my list for a while. I do not like, well, I don't like anything Kung Fu or anything. Oh no. Like anything like that. So fighting, karate, none of, I don't like that stuff. Uh oh. So that kind of <laughs> just, that kind of just turns, yeah. So. You're going to hate my favorites list. <gasps> <laughs> no, don't spoil it. Okay, go ahead. Um... The pilot? Why'd you keep watching, man? <laughs> okay, I could honestly see that only because it's longer. And so they add like more red herrings and it's kind of hard to follow and pay attention to. Wait, what's Mr. Monk and the pilot? No, 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 no. The pilot episode. Oh, I don't like the pilot episode. Oh my God, I should have made that my least favorite. I did not like the pilot episode. It's so long. It's it's too long. I mean, it was a made for TV movie. So it, it was too long and yeah. I could I could see that. It, I think I think it's a great pilot, but I could definitely see that. Yeah. Um is it your turn or my turn? I think it's my turn. Okay. Um The Godfather. Mm. Why? I just feel like it's a solid episode. Yeah. I mean, I could see it. I don't really like mobster stuff, but watch it. I don't mind watching that back. I li- I like that episode. I so. also like that episode. Mr. Monk is someone else. <sighs> How though? Uh, I mean, I, 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 I could kind of see it just because Monk is is someone else, and if you don't like him being someone else, they're not going to like it. But I think it's a fantastic. Episode, I think so. it's definitely a fantastic yeah. episode. It's it's better than takes his medicine. Is takes his medicine on here? No, it is not. Why? Well, I don't know. Actually, it there's there's more. <gasps> oh, it is. It is. I saw it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, Mr. Monk in the earthquake. I like that one a lot, but okay, I, that's not that bad. A uh, garbage strike. Why? I could see that, that too. Sense. I think that I think. Oh my gosh! I forgot to say my unpopular opinions. Oh, oh my no, gosh! What? I'm dumb. Okay, okay, just really quick. There's not that many. First one. Natalie didn't need a man. Uh, I don't agree. At the end, you don't think she need. You think, I think she needs? I think that's unpopular. Oh. And I think her man should have been monk. Okay, this was reminded me of this. I think Mr. Monk takes a vacation, up all night, and Garbage Strike are overhyped. Wait, Mr. Monk takes vacation, Garbage Strike and what? Up all night. <gasps> are overhyped. There, I said it. I said it. We are about to throw some hands. Okay, my next one is Mitch being a coward was a terrible storyline. Oh, I agree. It's just embarrassing. Okay. Linda Fusco... And the captain should have been in game minus the murder. Oh, agreed. 100%. Over TK. Linda Fusco was the best thing that ever happened to Captain Sotomayor. He met his match. He really did. She's I the think. one. Um, okay, my last one is when Monk is, quote, mean to his assistants, I feel more bad for him than I do for them. Why? Um, I think it has to yeah. go back to the what I said before about his... It's his disability is what makes him that way. So like I don't th- I don't think he's being mean to them. So whenever he's acting that way, I feel more like, oh monk. He like doesn't know he's being Yeah, mean. not like, oh, I can't stand monk. There's a lot of people that feel that way. Like, oh monk, oh he's just a jerk in this one. I'm like, oh monk, that's sad. <laughs> like I feel bad for him. Like Natalie and Sharona are normal. Like they could be like, stop, suck it up. Like yeah. So, that's my unpopular opinion. Sorry for going back, but uh, it reminded me whenever I saw that garbage strike. I was like, oh yeah, I thought that was overhyped. So, okay, next one is the 12th man. I can see it. I can see that. Up all night. Oh, I want to strangle you, but I can definitely see it. <laughs> I, th- I think it's the same thing. If you don't like a fever dream episode, you're not going to like it. And I don't. I so. just love a good, I love a good random episode. Yeah. Biggest fan. People don't like Marcy. I don't know. I, what can you do? Why? Other Detective? I can see it. I didn't like Other Detective. You didn't. I know. Gets a new shrink. 
Oh, I can see that's kind of just boring. I I want to watch Other Detective again because now that I've seen a lot of Seinfeld. Oh, interesting. That's okay. I see. I, I feel like I'd like it more. Ooh, what about the next one? Uh, Daredevil. That's where he's suicidal. Oh, I did not like that one. Yeah. We did not like that one. Okay, th- these next ones got multiple votes. All those other ones oh. only got one. So th- this got two votes. Naked Man. Oh, thank God. Okay. Next one. On Wheels. How did I get two votes? Because Monks Amin and Natalie. Oh, that's true. That Falls in Love. Point. I can see got that. Got two. Oh, I can see okay. that. Okay. Really Dead Guy. Definitely could see that. Then, uh, yeah, I can see that. Um, Ghost to the Office. I really like that episode. Why? Yeah, I, I, don't like- have, I don't see why anyone have beef with that. I guess because Monk doesn't end up with his friends in the end, and they're mean to him too. I don't know. Um, Mr. Monk and the Dentist. Uh, I can see it. Yeah, it's people. A lot of people don't like the dentist. First of all. Yeah, exactly. And it's just a creepy episode. Yeah, and then he's tortured by the dentist. So there you go. Yeah, that's not fun. On air, I could see see that one because Max Hudson is a total jerk. Oh, the Ziploc, like Ziploc bags. Oh yeah, 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 that's so messed up. Yeah. Buys a house. I can definitely see that. We did not like that one. The rapper. Why? I think there's a lot of. Like. I think there's a lot of people that don't like that one. Like people Jesus. are like. I think people think that one is like. If they don't like it, they think it's really cheesy and like beneath monk like the show to do that. Like, like we didn't okay, need a guest star. Like, like, like we didn't stuff. need monk to like talk slang and all this stuff and like try and I yeah. I, I love it, so I can't. I'm I not gonna. It. I'm not gonna dog it. So, <laughs> word. Um, Mr. Monk and the other brother. I love this one. I you could not like see this. that for sure. Most unnecessary storyline. Um, I loved it. Missing Granny. No, I. Wait oh, a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. I I'm would sorry. still like to talk about that. Okay. What do you mean, most unnecessary storyline? Jack Jr. has been mentioned before, and I and I was intrigued by Jack Jr. I was like, who is this other brother? Who is Monk's other brother? Hand of God. Pot, and he sounds like the exact opposite of Monk. I bet you could look and you could find a recording of me saying, I would like to meet this Jack Jr. one day on the show. Whoa. I bet you could find that. I'm not even joking. I, yeah, I just think it's very... Unne- I think that the dad storyline was more necessary than the brother. Yeah. I think, honestly, they were both... I think that we didn't need either of them. I just don't see, like, why would you even try to top Ambrose? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think they were, Introduce the other ones first, and then do Ambrose. I don't think they were trying to. Okay, well, that's... I mean, yeah. I wouldn't... I don't know why I said that. But (laughs) just saying, like, I think it's just unnecessary. Like, after you have Ambrose, an amazing Ambrose, like, I don't need his family. I don't know. The next one's The Missing Granny. I could see that one. I could see that one. Uh, it's boring and nobody dies. So there's that. Really? Nobody yeah. dies? Mm-mm. It's like one of the only episodes, or the only episode maybe, that nobody dies. Because they just kidnap her and it's about the chair. Nobody dies. Yeah. That's crazy. Weird, right? The Bully. I could see that. I could see that. Just a forgettable episode. It really is. The Actor. You didn't like this one. I didn't. It was creepy. Yeah. Ooh, these next ones got more. They, these ones got three votes each. Oh, Wow. It's a lot of votes. Takes his medicine. Yep. I can definitely see that for sure. Me too. I can see that. I don't... This is one of those ones where you're like, if you don't like to see Monk as somebody else, I don't like seeing him as the monk. Oh, yeah, for sure. Sorry. Oh, not sorry. Um, the next one is Takes the Stand. Takes the Stand? I can see it. It's not as eventful as it sounds. Exactly. Yeah. Like monk versus lawyer, and you'd be like, "Whoa, that's sick!" And then it just wasn't. Yep. Exactly. Circus. I don't. I actually don't know why people would. Oh, maybe the elephant. It's a classic. If they don't like the elephant, like crushing the guy, maybe I don't know. I guess that's pretty creepy. I don't know. Ooh, the next one. And the lady next door. I don't like that episode. I don't. I do not this like that poor episode. This old lady, and y'all are always dogging on her. And but she... Monk is so mean to her, and she didn't do anything, and it's extremely sad. Wait. And I didn't like the egg-eating people. Oh, the egg-eating people? It was funny how just unnecessary they were, though. Yeah. Like, they were. They did not need to be They there. did not. Okay, the next one has four votes, and that's Mr. Monk and the Big Reward. Mm, I can see it. I rated that a two. I think that's my <laughs> lowest rated one ever. <laughs> so I could I could see, I could see it. it. It made me. I just, could see you seeing it. It really just made me angry. If I'm being honest. 
Yeah. Mr. Monk and the wrong man. Four votes. I could see that as well. Wrong man. Oh, where he gets the wrong guy. Yeah. And he spends the whole episode sucking up to Monk. I mean, the Monk sucks up to him. Max oh, Martin. Oh, that wasn't that bad. Um, Mr. Monk and the leper. Five whole votes for that. Oh, yeah. Five. Yep. All these, I guess a all, lot of people just don't. Well, like all of these next ones people. all all tied for five. This is the number one spot. So the leper was the most popular one. I could see that one. I can definitely see that. I, um, next is the UFO, which I could def- hundred percent see that. that yeah. Um. Whoa. This one was the most surprising. This one is easily the most surprising. Bumps his head. Yeah. That's not even that bad. Um, honestly, though, honestly, before, I think I probably said this when we did this episode, but I thought I was going to like it a lot less because Cora was like super cringy to me and I didn't like it at all. Like him being taken advantage of her but, and stuff, but I think it's funny now. And I also like Laurie Metcalf, so uh-huh. I couldn't, I couldn't hate on it. Okay. So now time for our least favorite episodes. So these are, this is, this is getting official now. These are our... Top 10 official. Junk Monk Podcast official least favorite episodes. We went through every single episode. We did, guys. We, like I said, it stack of notes. for, f- like, literally five hours. To, to, to discuss each episode. And so we've picked them. And here's the ones that suck. <laughs> for real. Okay. Number 10. Mr. Monk gets stuck, stuck in, in traffic. traffic. Nobody likes getting stuck in traffic, first of all. Why would you make a episode about would that, that be a bottle episode where they're all oh like, yeah that's a bottle episode right there they're where they're stuck in traffic and you feel that stuck feeling and you feel stuck and it's stuck and mm-hmm. i d- like i can name it off the top i don't like crystal the driver not funny the storyline is not that interesting with the whole what's it called like the environmental group it's like, just not like believable it feels like a fever dream but like not a fun one <laughs> Like, oh, remember what you said you didn't like about it? The two-way street thing? Yeah. Like, how Natalie is just a liar the whole time? Well, no, she's complaining. She's, or not a liar, yeah. Just... Yeah, she's complaining. Like, oh, it's a two-way street, two-way street. Annoying yeah. punk. Yeah. I would say there's a big chunk of episodes there that aren't good, but we chose Stuck in Traffic. And let's move on to number nine, which is... Mr. Muck and the Big Reward. Yeah. Uh, once again, <laughs> I rated two. it a two. Yeah. I, I, that's actually incredibly savage of me. I am. I laugh every time I hear that. It's I so think boring. the four guys fo- or three guys following him around is totally lame. I don't like the feeling that you get from these guys trying to steal credit from him. And Natalie's money hungry the whole time. And then Gladys gets the money when she's rude too. Like she's not a hero in this. In my opinion, she doesn't feel like a hero. Like someone you would want to get the money, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Okay, number eight. Mr. Monk and the Rock concert. Mm, boring. Just didn't like it. Yeah, it's just boring. Boring, boring. yeah. You think, like, rock concert, like, it's going to be a rager. It's going to be fun. There's going to be loud music. There's going to be fun experiences. There wasn't really. Yeah, no. It wasn't very fun. Number seven. Mr. Monk and the Other Woman. Boring. Boring. It's just... This is... Uh, yeah. Well, my biggest problem with it is definitely that this is the seventh episode in the series and Monk already has a love interest. And I don't like that at all. Not one bit. I think that how can you lean so far into the Trudy obsession and then be like, oh, he already likes another woman. Not believable. Not believable yeah. and not... And even if it is, don't do it. That's... For That's sure. something for a later time where you're like, oh my gosh, he's like, he likes this woman. Not episode seven. Okay, number six, Mr. Monk goes to jail. But I, there's not much to say. It's just boring. This one is like, the crime is really complicated. Remember, this is the one with the like, she like fries his organs so that they can't use the organs to protect her son from a lawsuit. Like, what? That's, that's just, No. And then, I don't know, I think this one is boring as well. I think it feels, when you're watching it, it feels really long. And it's not a good ending episode, like season 16, or episode 16, um, like a season finale to a good season. I think it, it really is I think long. it misses the mark for sure. That's really a big 
downfall like, of a lot of episodes. Oh yeah, like you judge them harshly. Sure. This is what's gonna make us come back. I know. No. Season f- or season five, number five. Um, Mr. Monk and the UFO. Sorry, it's, everyone. It's not good. It's just not good. It seems like a really fun adventure. That's a big miss. Yeah. And yeah, you know how we feel about that one, guys. Number four, Mr. Monk Mr. goes Mump. to the hospital. Mr. Mump. Um, this also is a season another fin- season finale. Yeah, it's not. Not good. It's not it, people. It's, it's boring. It's so boring. Uh, overly dramatic. About his nosebleed? Like, just in, yeah. I think in general, it's not overly dramatic. It's very boring. I don't like that Bulldog from Frasier is the killer and he's not funny. He's just evil and he like beats Monk almost to death with like an oxygen it's, tank or like a crutch or something and like scary. beats him. Yeah. And the whole tetracycline thing, Monk's nosebleed. Natalie leaves him. And it's it's because she's pregnant in real life. But she leaves him. And not a good look on Natalie. Really is not. Don't like that one either. Number three. Mr. Monk and the dentist. I can, I mean, it's just not. A lot of people don't like Monk being tortured in the dentist chair. And And he has that like thing that like, oh, he's just not. And he's like, please, oh, Lord God, please wash your hands. Yeah. (laughs) I know I'm laughing, guys. It's not funny. (laughs) It's just boring. I just, it, to, it does have two feet, but oh yeah, it's totally the murder weapon. And and what's so tragic is this has the Randy Disher project, and oh, yeah. he quits and everything, and the whole episode like Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, all that. Like he kills the armored car driver and all this. No, nope, not a good storyline. Don't like it at all. Nope. Okay, number two. Mr. Monk and the Naked Man. I know why we put it up there. Yeah. It's just not fun. Mm. It's, first of all, not even, like, memorable. And then, second of all, gross and weird for just no reason. Yeah. Naked people. Not... Not fun. Not fun. No. Not very family-friendly, if you ask me. No. They actually showed the guy's butt, too. Like, his actual butt. I do remember that. I remember being like, what just happened? And then Monk looks up at the sun. Natalie's like, Mr. Monk, you're going to go blind. And he's like, I know. (laughs) (laughs) That's the point, Natalie. And then also Angela Kinsey is guest star. And her character is really boring. And, like, it's all about the x-rays. And, like, Peter McNary stocks and all of this. Like, it's boring. And then his old Apple core key thing was, like, super crazy moment. But, like... (laughs) He's like he took the core, he took the apple core, fashioned into a key, and picked the lock, and sl- we sl- slithered between the bars or whatever. They secrete some type of oil. <laughs> like is this crazy, 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 crazy theory? And yeah, not a good look on Monk because also the naked guy wasn't the guy. Oh yeah, he wasn't the guy. It was literally Angela Kinsey, and so you're like he shows this like prejudice. You just feel gross about it. Yeah, no. For sure, no. Not good. Okay, our number number one one. least favorite episode Junk Monk podcast official is... Obviously. We've said this millions of times. Mr. Mr. Monk Monk is is underwater. underwater. Teamwork. Teamwork. (laughs) We did that. Um, it's just not... It's not it. It's just... It's just not it. It's... I like how depressing our thing... Mr. Monk is... <laughs> that's what you get for that's, least favorite. That's exactly <laughs> what the episode feels like. Yeah. It's just... Bottle episode. Is it a bottle episode? If it, it... Not... It's not really. Oh, it's not? Okay. There's a lot of walking around before they even get into the... Okay. Submarine. They, yeah. Okay. It's just not fun. It's not... There's nothing happening. There's nothing going on. Out of every single, oh, it's just boring that we've had on this list. This is the number one. It's the most boring episode of Monk. Well, we don't like Steven. We don't I like mean, Steven. No, the, the Steven. commander is. I mean, he's a, he's actually a pretty formidable like guy. He's a he, he's a jerk. Yeah. So you're like okay, but he's kind of boring, and so is the whole storyline about the firecracker inside the bottle, and he killed himself, but Steven doesn't think he killed himself, and all of this like. I, yeah, uh, I don't, and then, Nat, like, so much of it is about Natalie and his relationship, and them kissing, and it feels so weird. It feels like such a random episode. 
That's like a fever dream episode that you don't like. Not, I don't like that one at all. Just nope. Uncomfy. Uncomfy. Ugh. And he's trapped on a submarine, which makes me feel like I'm drowning, and I don't like that feeling whatsoever. So, okay, guys, so those were our joint team least team favorite episodes. JMP. Now for our personal ones. Okay, I'll go first. Here's some one. I'm just going to spout off some ones I didn't like. So this is what happened. I looked at all the episodes. I jotted down a bunch of episodes that I didn't care for very much. And then I wrote down my top three that actually these are the honestly only three episodes that I had this like visceral reaction to like, ew, I don't want to watch that episode ever again. I don't like it. All the other ones I can live with. But among the list are 12th Man, Missing Granny, Cobra, The Election, Big Reward, Fashion Show, The Dentist, Rock Concert, Naked Man, Underwater, Lady Next Door, UFO, and Goes Camping. Okay. But my official list, my gear grinding list at number three, Mr. Monk and the really, really dead guy. Okay. Don't like that one. I don't like Agent Thorpe. He's super mean to Monk when he's like, you're fired. Turn around. Keep walking. Don't look back. Don't look back. Keep walking. Like, who talks to another human being like that? That is ridiculous. <laughs> the storyline is boring. The six-way killer. The, the killer at the end comes out totally left field. It's about the golden flakes and the cake. That, like, digest after 36 hours. Like, not cool. So, my number two episode is Mr. Monk and the Wrong Man. I cannot stand that episode. I cannot stand that Max Barton is the guy. And mm-hmm. he's 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 guilty. And he's mean to Monk. Like, yeah, you put mm. me away. I hate you. Instead of, like, being forgiving and going along, like, to get along, he's super mean. And it makes no sense. And the Monk spends the whole time sucking up to him. And trying to make his life better. And I can't stand it. Ew. And my number one episode, which we already talked about, is Mr. Monk Goes to the Hospital. This has to be like the least plot heavy story line. Uh Very boring. And not it. Just not. So that's my list. Really dead guy, wrong man, and goes to the hospital. Okay. That's a pretty solid, unsolid list. Okay. Okay. um, I guess I'll go with my number three. Mr. Monk eats jail the whale. Okay. All right. God. Interesting. Number three, you're led to believe that Dale the whale is this big character that's going to be like a villain throughout the series when he has, what, four or five episodes? Uh, Three, I think. Three? three. Yeah. That's, he's just disgusting and not fun and uh, I don't ever want to watch that again. I don't want to. Okay. Um, (laughs) Don't please don't make me. Um, Number two. Mr. Monk and Mrs. Monk. Ooh, really? This was our first episode, was it not? It was our first episode. I just... I forgot about that. It made me not like Monk for, like, the first... The other episodes we did. And it was just boring. Okay, I don't think it's boring. But it's, this is your list. This is your list. That's your list. It's Go just, ahead. I think I, it's really tragic no, and sad. I, but... I understand that because... You have seen everything else, and you have been like, wow, Trudy, and this is, like, really big for Trudy and stuff. Uh-huh. But it's just it's just not for me, because I just started right there. And it, I've always hated it for it. it. Well, it is kind of a doozy that we did that, like, our first episode. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was, like, the most heavy thing ever. Like, so Trudy comes back from the dead and dies. It was just boring. So. I didn't like it. Okay, what's your number one least favorite episode? My number one least favorite episode... <laughs> Mr. Monk's favorite show. Oh my god! I have hated this oh my since I've seen it. It has made me uncomfortable. I have it physically hurts me. My brain wants to melt. My my knees lock up, and my back starts to hurt. <laughs> and it just it's just not. I it just cringe. Mm. It makes me want to die. Okay. And I, yeah. I hate it so much. <laughs> okay. I hate it so much. I, I guess I could see that. Even though Big Reward, he rated a two. But okay. Yeah. That's... Big Reward, I don't know what I was thinking with that. I think you were mad that Gladys got the diamond. I was mad. I was just mad. It was pure anger and rage. But like yeah. upon further inspection, it wasn't that bad. What did you rate well, that? The Big Reward? Yeah, like a seven. Um... I think it was pretty low. I think it was pretty season. low, like a five. 
Or f- I don't know. Did I, I would give love? it a five. Maybe it was a f- like five point five or six or something. I don't remember. That's what I would give it. But I mean, it was on my list, not my official list, but yeah. Wow, you picked some doozies. I did. I, dis- I disagree, but I like I it. I had them in the chamber I the disagree. entire my I entire like life, it. basically. Okay. Hey guys, it's Candace here. This is the end of part one of our series wrap up. But don't worry, we'll be back for more. We want to give you guys all the content, so we're going to split this episode up. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to tune in. You'll thank me later. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Junk Monk Podcast. We'd love to hear from you, so please give us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, follow us at Junk Monk Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. If you want to know more about Candice, she's at Hardens and Hard Hats on Instagram. And if you want to know more about me, Noah L., subscribe to my vlog, Noah Hernandez, on YouTube. Also, you can leave us a voicemail at 323-366-0477 with your questions, comments, or just to show us some love. Don't forget to catch up on Monk with Amazon Prime Video, and of course, subscribe to our show. You'll thank me later.